Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God! First time in weeks that's happened. Wait, which one's that? Oh, boy. Where am I? What year is it? What year is it? Yeah, okay, no, we're good. <laughs> I forgot to turn off the, uh, the order. There we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is Thursday, uh, September the 20th, 2018. Mr. Black, how you doing, sir? I am very tired today. Very, very tired. No, we're uh, having but, a, having a tired day today. Yeah, but, uh, you know, overall doing pretty good. Same old, same. I see your, your uh, you know, 47,000 million words into your, into your book now. So, uh, the encyclopedia, uh, Britannica streaming edition is coming along quite nicely. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. We got, uh, I am what? 25 little, just a little under 25,000 words in. Mm -hmm. And I would say I'm about 75% done. Uh, the book cover for Kindle paperback and audiobook are being de is being developed now. Mm. Um, I basically just went on one of those like um, pay to play sites where like Fiverr or you know, but except this one isn't Fiverr. Like Fiverr is like a really cheap. Um, you can get some good stuff there, but mm. I went to a site called Ninety Nine Designs, and okay. you basically you put how much money you're willing to spend on your cover, mm -hmm. and I put seven hundred bucks uh, for all the artwork, promotional work. Um, just basically everything there, there is to do at face value, uh, mm. for, for the book. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you put that out and then people basically fight for the work. So you'll get like, I think in total, I've had about 37 or 38 different artists, um, do their take on the cover. And basically you fill out like a huge informational sheet and you give some, some point of references to other book covers that you like. And then you tell them like what kind of color theme you want and so on and so forth. And then they just be artists and come up with whatever. And um, since the beginning, I've seen probably about a hundred, almost 200 covers from, you know, 30 something artists. And now I've got it dwindled down to the finalists where I picked uh, a, <laughs> You know, it's like it's like a fucking American Idol or something. Yeah, like, I was gonna say, did you get to pull a Simon Cowell? Be it, this is the worst book cover of yes. all time. And there's some really bad ones too, because <laughs> you know anybody on the site can, unless you're paying top top dollar. Like mm. there's a, unless you're paying, I think it's fifteen ninety nine, fifteen hundred ninety nine bucks, or twenty five hundred bucks for a cover. Then anybody 
can can do it. So if you're under fifteen hundred dollars for your work, mm -hmm. then it opens it to not only the high end people, but also the entry level people. Mm -hmm. If you're over fifteen hundred, it's uh, mid level to high level artists. So ones that are rated very highly and get lots of work, um, it your your uh, ad will only show to them. Uh, and if it's twenty five hundred or more, then it only goes to the to the high rated people. But mm -hmm. It's not bad doing it at a bit bit of a cheaper price because then you get everybody. It just sucks because some of the best artists are like, ah, oh, I'm not doing all that for 700 bucks, right? So, right, right, right. But, yeah. but a lot of great artists do, right? They're like, fuck, this is easy. Uh, let's just slap it on. So I've got some really great designs and um, it'll probably take about another week. I'm working with basically two designers. I went down to five and now I've cut it down to two. And uh, they're basically competing. So I, I, they'll show me something and then I'm like, ah, I don't like that or I like that. Can you change that? And then I've just been having votes on the stream for uh, people kind of voting and chiming in which ones they like more and shit. So that's where I'm at right now. After I get the cover, then I can start doing some promotional stuff and I can build a website. And hopefully while I'm doing all that, I'll have the whole manuscript done by the end of this month. And then comes the hard part where, where it's, it's the edit. So then I'll have to hire, a, <laughs> uh, you know, an, an editor. I'll go over a small edit myself. Of course. And then, yeah. and then I'll wash it off to a professional that will properly structure it. And there's like, I've been reading up on like, there's laws to like writing that like certain things have to be done in a certain way. Um, and then formatting it correctly for each platform as well. Because depending on where you're putting the book, it the, the format, uh, when you send it out to Amazon has to be laid out differently. So um, you got to The formatting is cheap. It's only like about $200 to, to have your book mm -hmm. formatted, but it's the editing part. That's, that's going to be expensive because you know, you know me, right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm so not, what are, the, what, are they, what are the rates? Do they do an hourly or do they do a, like how many edits that they're actually doing or how many passes or like what? Yeah. What so is, that, that really all depends on who, what company uh, you're getting to do it. Now you can go to a big, a big time company and pay uber amounts of dollars. But yeah, yeah. once again, um, it's suggested that you go on forums or whatever, or you, you go to other YouTubers um, uh, that, that have self-published their own books and they have like really great references that they use. Um, and then there's like, so basically I'm not going to go after like some, some huge, you know, publishing company. There's no yeah, point. Yeah. I'm, I'm self-publishing, but I'll go to like a very reputable uh, editor and you're for those you're typically looking at an hourly rate, um, but it's it's and there's different levels. So there's just a straight up edit where they'll just edit, make sure everything is properly grammar, punctuation, all that stuff. Um, but then there's another level where they'll also give you suggestions. So they'll they'll edit something and then they'll they'll suggest how that should sound and how it should go. Um, judging by their experience of being a professional editor and, and how books really should sound for the most part. And then you have an option to say no or yes, because it's ultimately your, your work. And, yeah, yeah. and but, but it's not their job to change your voice within the book. It's just their job to guide you to make it a little bit more coherent and cohesive, make it, make it a little bit flowy flow better. So they mm -hmm. might, they might tell you to stru structure things a little bit differently or how you use bullets or because in my book, there's a lot of different bullets. So I'll say like, you know, um, uh, you know, the I'll, 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 for example, in the dirty esports chapter, uh, I have a, a big section about running ads mm -hmm. and then I, I go through uh, there's different sections within running ads. So I talk about like uh, the pros and cons. So you know, when you run ads, you're going to lose a percentage of your viewers because people don't like seeing ads, you know, and then I, mm -hmm. I'll talk about, you know, uh, different times of the year. So then there's a little section about CPM rates and what CPM means. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, there's a section where I talk about uh, peak time. So, you know, holiday season is the best time to run ads. Um, I also talk about is it good or not to run ads if you're a bigger or smaller stream? Mm -hmm. If you're a smaller stream and you're running ads, you're going to lose viewers, which is ultimately going to put you a little bit lower on the list in the directory, which could ultimately hurt you. And to make what? Maybe a dollar, a dollar fifty for a two minute ad. Is that really worth the trade off? So I really go through all that. And there's different bullets for each thing. So a proper editor will, will tell me, will show me how to structure each of these to make it not only look appealing and uh, to the eye, but make it easy to read uh, and make sure everything is flowing correctly. So right, right. I want to make sure I have a structure editor, a punctuation, a grammar editor, and one that will tell me, um, you know, this is how I think it should go. And then I can say yay or nay. So they'll give your expertise, so on and so forth.
So to answer Fun. your question, to answer your question, it's usually hourly, but then there's different levels to it. And then right. when they're done, when they're completely done and their hands are clean, um, they usually do like they give you one or two revisions mm. where where you might do you might write some stuff again and say, can you add this in? Um, and then after that, they'll charge you per word. So when you're done and it's done, you're going, yo, one last time, you know, before I get this book out, they're going to go, OK, I'm going to charge you five dollars per per word. Right? right. So they'll they'll make it a little bit more expensive. So five dollars a word. I'm like, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. So so make sure when you give it to them at that point. <laughs> There is there's no mistakes. <laughs> getting yeah, you get reamed at that point. Yeah. Um beauty. Fantastic. Sounds like you had a uh, uh another productive week. How yeah, was the StarCraft? Was I, I did you, I, I think I saw today. that it you was, had uh some coaching at some point this week? Yeah, yesterday uh was it yesterday or day before yesterday? I think it was day before yesterday. Uh a, a streamer by the name of Fluencio. That is um, a name I do not know. No, neither do I. He does a show with uh, with Pig, um, called I think the Falencio Files, and um, <laughs> okay. yeah, and it's basically uh, I don't I don't know exactly what it is, but but it's basically uh, Protoss making other people angry with these crazy builds. Ah, so anyway, he's been he's been watching my stream for a while, um, and uh, it was one of those things where where I was getting wrecked by Zergs by twelve pools, and I was raging. And um, there was one troll in the chat that was like, all you need to do is make adepts quicker. I'm like, well, listen, moron, I can't make adepts any faster. I'm like, how about this big guy? How about you come on Discord and you tell me uh, and you show me, you coach me live on stream right now on how so I can stop these 12 boys. Like, OK, and he bit. so so a random guy comes on Discord and he's like, all right, here's here's a, here's a replay. Let's let's load it up. All right. I load up the replay. I get into the game. And just as the game starting he's like, I'll be right back. I got to go grab a snack. I'm like, all right. And as the game's loading, it says that he's like in Silver League. Um, and I'm like, why is this Silver League? Aren't you supposed to be like good? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my Smurf. I don't play on this account, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, I'm like, all right, buddy, sure. And he runs, he fucks off for a minute and I'm starting to watch it. And there's not even a 12 pool. The, 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 the game, like, it's just horror. It's just like, it's, it's some lag TV shit, man. It's like some really you got, bad. You got level. swooned. I got, swooned. I got swooned. You got swooned. And he comes back. He comes back and he's like, and he's just playing stupid, right? So anyway, I kick him off. We have a good laugh. And then that was when Felicio said, I'll actually show you how it's done. So then he came on. He had some replays. And uh, good news, I haven't died to a 12 pool since. So there I mean, the coaching's really helped. But the bills he's showing me is is very, very, uh, um, not not only just micro intensive, but it's just, uh, it's mechanical. It's very, very mechanical and very time oriented. So uh, right now I'm just grinding that out. It's been up and down. It's been swingy, but it's been exciting for the stream because I'm doing new things and the games are turning out to be different. So well, that's yeah, good. It, was, it was good. Good. Fantastic. Got wrecked today though. <laughs> it's gonna and I've been tired. A while. I've been tired as fuck today, man. Yeah. It's like waking up in the morning, writing the book for a couple hours, coming home, streaming nine, 10 hours. It's, it's caught up to me today. I just had, I, I woke up tired. I had one of those days. I woke up yeah. and I was like, no, I think I just want to turn back over and Wait until Friday before I actually do anything. That was that was you. my day today. Um, for no real like crazy reason either. Just well, I I just I guess all I can assume is that Gams maybe is having like a restless night, and I'm not waking up, but I'm just not sleeping as well as I would normally, or some shit, or some other factor. I don't know, but I woke up and I was just dead. So mm. uh, I feel you, and I and I didn't go and write a book and stream for. You know, however many hours I uh, I get up and um, did a bunch of chores around the house. It was one of those those days. Cooked dinner and did the garbage and cleaned the kitchen and um. Oh, and what I did end up doing or having enough time, thankfully, was um. Uh, getting almost the rest of the of the podcast gear set up oh nice nice so uh yeah it's looking like so they discontinued this shock mount but there's supposed to be when i went i went into long and mcquade on canard and the mm -hmm. guy was like i can't find i can't find i've never seen somebody so inept at their own like pos system in my entire fucking life he said like, can't find it i just it, and i was like showing him i was like this is the product code and now that i'm at home and i look it up trying to find it somewhere else because I'm assuming that it's it's not there and then I happen across Long and McQuaid again anyway and I'm I'm looking for other shock mounts and it's there 
and there's still three in that f- fucking store. So wow. I'm gonna have to go back, go back, uh, and get that. And that's the last piece because I ordered the table. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, so Costco um, is hooking us up with that, and by that I mean I bought it from Costco. Um, I was gonna say, are we getting sponsored by Costco? Are we that big oh, time? Oh, that would be fire. <laughs> Uh, free, free chicken, bro, free rotisserie bro, chicken bro. for life. I'd just <laughs> eat. I'd go full black, full <laughs> black. I'd be chicken every day, three days, three times a day. Yep, easy. So uh, yeah, we got the the table. It's it's uh, four foot, like I measured in your room, and mm-hmm. uh, fo- folding legs. And more than that, it folds in half. Nice. So it, and it has a little handle thing, so it will be really easy to to put the set away. Ordered the mic stands. Those were harder to find, like the on-table ones. Mm -hmm. If you're just getting like a little like single bar, little mic stand thing, it's not so hard to find. But the problem is they're like super short. And I don't know how we would have made that work with these mics. Mm. So so I had to do a little bit more digging and it cost a little bit more money. But we got we got like basically like mini booms. So they have a a weighted foot and it's a a boom, like a regular mic stand almost that we can like move up and down and towards us. Not like an arm, but like a regular mic stand. No, it's cool. Uh, So we got a couple of those, the table and something else. And I'm not remembering. Anyway, that got picked up. I've got to get one of these though. These little uh, sock for your mic, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, which is also apparently a, little bit hard to find, but I think I'll be able to get it somewhere. The table just, okay, this is, shout outs to Hattori, who has asked me once a day, or more, what I feel like, every day, since we have mentioned that we are gonna do this fucking podcast in your house eventually, and several other people. You're gonna know when it happens. We're gonna yes. let everyone know. It's gonna when happen. It's, we, when it's we gonna happen. Plans. We're in but the middle gonna- of it. It's taken. We've got together. We we planned out all this stuff. Adam we, just ordered everything. We have then to he's got to come over here, and we got to set it all up we, and hook up the other computer <laughs> and get the sound settings right, so that there's no longer any fuckery. But it's gonna be nice when it's all done. There's some shit to just, do. We can just click a record button live, and Bob's your uncle. But yes, we're working on it. It's it's happening. it's happening. I did I did find that I have I think f- I I have enough XLR cable to make it work if we're gonna feed it through the wall. Um, mm-hmm. I think I've got two that are, or four, cause we have to go through the cloud lifters that are long enough. So that's handled. So yeah, so things are coming. So that's done. Uh, and then this week, uh, dad and I also turned my room into a I padded cell. Yeah. So, uh, that's the, that's coming along. So that's like 80% of what I wanted to do in the room. I still have to, Jeff could see this. You guys can't, but this has to be dealt with the window. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, closet doors. And I'll probably do something in like the corners of the room for bass trap stuff because it still it still rings a little bit, but it's not bad. It changed the room dramatically. Holy I fuck! I can imagine. Gabs can walked imagine. in the room and said some shit, and she went, "What the fuck?" She couldn't hear it. <laughs> it was there was like almost no there's almost no reflection. So they worked really well. Uh, so that was a bonus. So uh, thumbs up on that little DIY project. Cost me like, um, oh what. Maybe 150 bucks, and oh nice, that's uh, cheap. And it covers almost my entire ceiling. Nice uh, for that, which is which is really good. Got me eight panels. So, so pretty soon, really what you're saying is Adam's going to be able to uh, do a little bit of narration. Yes, yes, mm. I could probably get away with it now if I didn't get loud. Like if I was doing like a regular like reading voice, like if I was mm. down here and I was talking like this, I'd we're okay. Good. But yeah. if I ever have to raise my voice, it might get a little sketchy. So it's it's really freaking close, but that's coming along, so that's good. So that got done. And then what else? Um, played... What games did I play this week? I played... Um, I was watching you play Battle yesterday. Tech. Yeah, Battletech. Yeah. Battletech. So uh, Hunter really wanted me to play Battletech, and so he gave me stupid amounts of money to play Battletech. So I was like, all okay. right, bro. So I'll, right, I'll play some, yes. I'll play some Battletech. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, that was the second day of me playing that. It's pretty good. It's like a, it's, it's, if you, if you aren't already invested in Battletech or Mech Warrior, it's probably like a six out of 10 so far. But if you're, inve- okay. but if you're a fan, it's probably a seven or an eight, I would say. Um, it's, uh, it's, 
it's definitely a game that you can tell was constrained by budget and by mm. the engine they built it in. It's another Unity special. Oh. Uh, every, time I, every time I see Unity, I die on the inside. Like, what they did within Unity is actually super fucking impressive. Like, if, if, if somebody who knows graphics engines in Unity sees it and they find out it's Unity, they're like, holy shit, this is really good. Um, but that doesn't actually make it particularly amazing. It just means that it was an impressive feat that they did what they did with it. Um, but it's been relatively fun so far. If you're into that kind of thing, it's basically XCOM, right? So, yeah. um, except it's hex grid instead of squares. So instead of mm -hmm. a regular grid, it's a hex, uh, hex pattern. Uh, I believe they just don't show you the hex on the ground. Um, uh, but the great news is so far I haven't been XCOM to death. It's That's not good. like, you know, the 99% oops, you just mm. missed like eight consecutive shots. Get wrecked. Yeah, you know, we haven't got that happen yet. So uh, so that's been nice. But yeah, it's a fun fun little game. Um, music is good. Story isn't bad. I mean, Battletech is, what, 30 years old or more? So the lore in yeah. Battletech is deep. <laughs> so Very there's, deep. A, there's a lot to work with and it's quite, it's quite cool. So I played that for a little bit. That was kind of fun. And... Um, Played the four. I don't know if I talked about this last week. I couldn't remember. I was trying to think about it before the podcast, but I'll just do a quick reiteration of it. Played the Forza Horizon Four demo. It's How really it? good. Mm. It looks fire. Graphically, it's a fucking powerhouse. Where's, Where's the butt? There is no butt. The butt. Oh. Is, the butt is. It isn't here yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's my only downside. Is the game is not released yet, and I want to play it. Um, no, it it is really good. I mean, it's. If, if you played Horizon 3, you're getting that with better graphics and um, slightly destructible environments. Like, And by that I mean they have some walls you can drive through now. Um, that, I don't know why they did that, but they did. Uh, and it seems like they're going to have more event variety. So like in the, in the last couple, you'd go through like a cycle of events and then it felt like you were just doing the same cycle of events forever and ever and ever. It seems like they're making an effort to change that up. But really, it's a fun driving game. It's The music is incredible. It's the little things. The details in that game are fucking wild. When you finish a race, you cross the finish line. It dumps you into a, like your car into a menu and it shows your car driving into the menu where you're showing you your race stats and everything and it happens right off the bat. Whatever direction your car is crossing that finish line and all the AI do cr also cross the into the menu that's how you see it so like at the finish line you do like a dope little slide through it's like the camera flashes you're on the fucking menu screen with your shit showing up you're like Tokyo drifting your ass onto the screen in slow-mo it's fire and then and then like the little tiny details where at the beginning of every race there's not like a five minute warm-up like in uh, yeah. other racing games it just you, it counts down like it loads three two one and the start of every race is a bass drop in the song that they start with each track oh that's fire which is just it's a little thing that's fire. and at no, first that's you, fire. That's, you might that not even notice little, that's it fire bro. and then when it happens you're like oh my who the fuck that decided just, that, that this is a thing you, that just gets you pumped it gets you fucking going right you're so yeah you fucking go it gives full, you an extra it gives you extra three horsepower absolutely which sometimes so. you need when you're a bad driver like me um so yeah, Fire, I'm definitely looking forward to it. 100% going to be buying that game and reviewing it, uh, but I can already tell that the game, you know, short of probably having some bugs on the Microsoft Windows Store because it's garbage, um, it's going to be a really fucking good racing game. So yeah, played that, and we'll talk about, um, both of us played, we won't talk about it now, but we'll talk about it later, we both played the uh, Black Ops 4 um, beta. Yes. Yes. So we'll be we'll be getting to that uh, a little later in the show as well. But that <laughs> was that was my week, and so now let's get in to some gaming news. Uh, as usual, I have front loaded a lot of the shit you don't give a fuck about just to get okay. it out of the way for you. Okay. All right. <laughs> First up on the list is the graphics card news. So the the 2080 and the 2080 Ti, the benchmarks finally released. That was. Uh, yesterday or day before? Can't remember which now off the top of my head. I think it was yesterday. Either way, benchmarks finally got released, um, and they were a bit all over the place, honestly. NVIDIA's done a really shitty job of this launch, like a really fucking awful job. Uh, the marketing has been terrible and vague and awful. Uh, they've been focusing crazy super hard on the new technology that these graphics cards are starting, 
people can't figure out if this is just the new generation of like phys X that did absolutely fucking dick all. Uh, like phys X, people forget how old phys X is. Like if you played Mirror's Edge, it's probably the one game that you've probably seen that setting in that you mm -hmm. even looked at. And it mm -hmm. makes cloth and stuff physics look way better. It's great. Mm -hmm. 15 years deep, nobody gives a fuck about phys X. Nobody's using it. So people are looking at this ray tracing thing going that maybe this is that next thing. Regardless, it dramatically altered the cost of the cards because this new technology is, as it turns out, pretty fucking expensive to do. And the trade-off is that it didn't necessarily give the generational gains in traditional graphics rendering that people were expecting. So in the last couple, like going from the 7 series, like you had the lightning cards, the 780s or whatever, yes. the lightnings. The TIs. Well, yeah, the TIs. So when, when you went from uh, that and then there was the, the 9 series that came after that because they skipped 8s for some reason, the, 90, uh, uh, the, the 980 TI, which is what I have right now, just this fucking enormous gap, like the 25% or some shit. Then like from 980 Ti to 1080 Ti, it was like 35% or some stupid nonsense. And the price was still pretty good. It was basically almost the same price as the generation before. Ain't the case this time around. Not even close. Nvidia is, for a great number of reasons, these cards are costing them a lot more money. First and foremost, it's new technology. And it's changing what's on the card itself in a expensive way, we'll say. Um, step two is, we talked about this in the podcast before, those tariffs that uh, Donald has so kindly put in place for everyone uh, also going to raise the cost of them. And so these cards are very expensive. And it's the first time since probably the four series cards that people have sat back and gone, this is not worth the money. Like, the price to performance is just not fucking there. Uh, the benchmarks came out. The long short of it is, they're going to have an absolutely enormous warehouse full of 2080s that nobody's ever going to buy. Literally ever. The performance in graphics right now, identical to the 1080 Ti, and in some games, the 1080 Ti actually outdoes the 2080. That's not to say that new drivers for the 2080 might bump it above, but it's not going to like fucking magically make it 30% yeah. better. Mm. Cost about $150, $200 more than a 1080 Ti. Mm. So you're getting basically the same performance, but you're spending $200 more <laughs> to get the card. So nobody's going to buy the 2080. And I highly suggest if anyone's listening out there that unless you are really helping unlocking yourself in on that 2080, it's a no-fly zone. For pretty much everyone. Go buy a 1080 Ti or some shit. The 2080 Ti, however, while extraordinarily expensive, at least provides a legitimate performance boost above a 1080 Ti. And relatively considerable, too. So, we're looking at somewhere between 20 and 30%. Mm. Which is pretty good. Um, and it's pretty good in ways that only matter to a pretty small portion of the market. Because let's remember that the 1080 Ti is still like a seven or $800 card or some mm, shit. That's what I... Uh, or I, have, I just have a... You have a 1080. I just have the regular 1080. Yeah. I don't have a Ti. Yeah. Uh, that's what came with your, uh, with, with your rig. Yeah. So the 1080 Ti is actually an absolute monster. It's, a, it's fucking crazy how strong that card is. Uh, but it's still a card that a very small portion of the market are buying. Because a lot of people are building entire computers for the cost of that... 1080 Ti. So the 2080 Ti is 1200 US dollars. So you're looking at about 250, 300 dollars more than a 1080 Ti. For the um 20 to 30 percent currently mm. with the drivers that exist now, performance boost. Mm. That has a lot of people going, nah, no, 1200 dollars for a graphics card is crazy. And they're not wrong. That's how much that you know, Panic has the Titan or whatever, that's how much he would have paid for a Titan, which was like the next fucking stupid, frivolous card buy, uh, or whatever. Here's, here's the deal. One, full disclosure, yesterday, I bought a 2080 Ti, pre-ordered it. Here's, here's the deal. <laughs> this fucking guy. Well, I'm on a, I'm on a nine, I'm on a 980 Ti and it's starting to, it's starting not to hit the, hit the numbers. If I had a 1080 like you, probably wouldn't be doing that right now. But 
I went and got the 2080 Ti. This Adam Adam goes, shit is uh fifteen hundred dollars US right now. Twelve hundred uh, or twelve hundred dollars US right now. Add another three hundred for a Canadian. Spend fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars on this. It's, it's a card. good it's a good chunk of money. And you're like you're like, yeah, it's a whole lot of no. Now I just want to tell everybody I just went and pre ordered the uh the twenty eighty Ti. Yeah. So the twenty eighty is like I think eight hundred dollars. Twenty eighty Ti is twelve hundred in US dollars. Mm. Somewhere something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood. I'm just giving full disclosure while I'm giving this to this this conversation so people can do with the information as they will. Because people have been asking me whether they should be buying this shit or not. <laughs> so I'm gonna I've, limit you to I'm gonna limit you to five more minutes on this subject. It's not gonna take me much longer. Don't worry. All right. So the 2080 Ti, this is why you buy the 2080 Ti. One, you have an extraordinary amount of money in your wallet that's burning a massive hole. Like literally, you can't you you're not into cocaine, you don't have any other vices. And you desperately need to spend some money. Two, you're playing games at 1440p at high refresh rates or 4K. That's what those cards are for. It's what the 1080 Ti was for, but 1080 Ti can't really do 4K in games that are coming out now. It struggles. Um, so you're limited to 1440p. And that's what a lot of the gaming monitors are sitting at now. 1440p, 120 hertz, whatever, that a lot of people are trying to push. That's the only two, that's literally the only two usage cases. You don't have a Coke problem, mm. and you play at 4K or high refresh rate 1440p. That's, that's it. So, uh, or you're like me, and you're just an asshole. And you just buy the card because your card isn't pushing your 4K TV, and you want it because you're, uh, you like to have that shit. And it's been three years since you bought a graphics card, so you're feeling the coke itch. It's my coke. That's, mm -hmm. that's my thing. I'm not going to try and defend it out here. I also get to use it as my, my huge tax write-off this year. Mm. And that's it. Mm. That's the, those, are the, those are the two main so, reasons. So here's, here, here's my thing, and I'll, and, I, and I'll just add it on to this, because I mm. love you, Adam. I, I mm. love you. It's mm. like a brother. Mm. You know, you sit here. Mm. And, and I have a feeling I know what's coming. And many of times, oh, you know what's coming. Mm -hmm. Many of times you shit on people. Yes. For spending a thousand dollars, God forbid, twelve, fourteen hundred dollars on a phone. Yes. But it's yes. okay mm -hmm. to spend mm -hmm. twelve, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars on a graphics card. Yes. Actually, well, it's not really okay. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I'm not, I'm not calling you on your shit. I'm, I'm yeah. just saying. No, I, I get it. I get now it. Now you understand why some people go. You know what? No, I fully understand why people buy iPhones yes. that cost fifteen hundred dollars. Yes. I understand it. I understand why people buy graphics cards mm -hmm. for for that much that much money. Mm -hmm. It's all it's all about your usage uh, out of it. For me, I'm going to be using this shit for. 10 to 12 hours a day Same for, my, for my work. Yeah. I mean, Probably I'm not... All, okay, Some yeah. p if you're on your phone... First of all, if you're on your phone for 10, 12 hours a day, you buy... You spend whatever the fuck you that want is on it. Quite, that is quite literally the vast majority I hope of the not. first world. There's no fucking no, way... What? There's no way you are spending yeah. 10 to 12 hours on this phone. What do you... Do you work? With, within... Do you well, sleep? Yes. Do you yes. eat? Do you do yes. anything that you can't just like, unless you have yes. a, a fucking pole people, attached people to your are, head that's holding your fucking foot? People are barely awake for 10 fucking hours in a day. And you're listen, telling me they're on it for 10 to 12 hours a day? They are, they are checking, they are checking their phone throughout the day, all day, while they eat, while they shit, probably why they fuck, uh, uh, while, while they're at <laughs> work. That is the addiction of phones. This is the world we live in. So I, I'm just, I'm I, just saying, I'm just saying. I mean, they use their phone a lot. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. 10, 12 hours a day might be stretching it just to shade. Well, I mean, listen, there are, there are tons of people out there that are buying graphics cards, not because they're using their computer 10 to 12 hours a day where Absol they need that absolutely. high, and where I'm, they need that high extra performance, which is the vast why majority of I'm people telling are them don't. Them. Yes. The vast majority of people were buying them because. They just want a new fucking graphics card. They want to say yeah. they got the best, the biggest, and the best dick uh, out right now. They want to feel like they're part of the 
the the thing and then just in the very case that they do start playing in 4k and fucking ultra triple hd and all this other mm. stuff they can they can do it in their glorious mm. 60 frames or or whatever i just want i just wanted i just wanted to throw that in because because you're sounding like a crazy iphone person and and that's okay and that's cool because i get it i'm just saying don't don't be so judgmental well, I'm not, when someone I'm buys not, a phone no, 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 for no, no, a thousand no. or twelve hundred bucks. No, your 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 estimation holds weight here. If I had bought a graphics card a year ago, and now I'm buying it again, there's a fundamental difference here. You got people who are buying the brand new iPhone once a year for that yeah. much money. Yeah, I haven't bought a graphics card in it's four years. years. Four years. And I use it daily for yeah. my job. I'm just saying, you don't need to it's explain not, yours. Adam, you don't need but to no, explain. No, I do yours. because you're trying. You're, no, you got your fucking smile on your face. Get that shit. You know what you're doing, motherfucker. Everyone well, sitting here watching and listening well, you're knows just, you're, trying to, you're, trying to, you're trying to make me sound like a hypocrite three, I mean, when hey, I'm not. Hey, it's, hey, not hey. it's not comparable. It is comparable. It's it comparable, comparable if I'm buying one yearly, but I'm not. Not everybody's buying an iPhone every year. I know I don't buy one every year. I'm I'm every I'm every about three years I buy an iPhone. And whatever's the newest, the latest thing, that's you're that's in the minority on that case. Like I'm them in the minority for well, not even. I I would say I'm pretty average. If you're buying a graphics card every four years, that's pretty mm. that's pretty standard. Mm. I don't know very many people you get more than four years of right. graphics card. Hey, I just I just want to throw that I just want to throw that out there. I don't want to make it a big deal. I'm just saying. No, no. I'm just saying people like their iPhones. People like the graphics cards. I'm not hating <laughs> on either. I'm not hating on. <laughs> hey, if you want to spend two thousand dollars on a on a on a graphics card, I'm for it, man. If you're gonna enjoy it, you know, if you can, you know, use it as a business expense on top of that, and it's extra bonus. You know, it's great. Hey, that's that's wonderful. Good for you. I'm happy for you. You got a nice new graphics card, man. It's <laughs> yeah. awesome. I'm not that happy for me. It cost me a goddamn <laughs> fortune. I sat there and I lamented for five hours between buying a 1080 Ti or a 2080 hey, Ti. If you got it, enjoy it, right? Just give it, get it, man. Just enjoy it. I, I hope not? I can, because it. it's expensive as fuck. I don't. I didn't really want to do it at first, and then I thought about it. If I'm going to hold on to this card for three or four years, I might as well do the fucking big dick move. Mm, why not? Go Sometimes for it. Sometimes you gotta go full black. Fuck it. That's right. What's That's next, right. Adam? What's next? Uh, Red Dead Redemption Two online beta coming in November. Hmm. Uh, so we all knew that it was going to have some sort of online thing because the even the the old one had online features. Uh, apparently, it is going to be similar to the original game. It's going to blend the narrative and cooperative competitive elements. It's going to be available on the Xbox, and PS4. Uh, and just as a little side note here, I also read that apparently the game is going to be playable in first person mode. So, um, for a That's long time, yeah, well, for a long time, people were modding GTA five to play yeah, first person. I saw that. Yeah. And then eventually Rockstar released an official first person mode to my recollection i might be actually just making that shit up in my head but i feel like that's what happened so uh yeah they're just gonna have that right off the rip so if you want to ride horses in first person great news go for it yeah. you're gonna be riding horses in first person um mm, that's i think that's a november release or something or um uh something along those. it's it's late october or early november or something like that um are you hopping on red dead when it comes out it's going to have to be not, like, honestly, yeah. like I'll try the beta. And mm. if I'm like, if I'm like crazy wowed about it, unless they make me pre-order it, then fuck that. But, um, if it's an open beta, then I'll try it and see what it's like. But I enjoy the first red dead and I beat it and it was fun. You know, just there's something, there's something about new releases, uh, for me that not only, not only are games, once we talked about it before, just stupid expensive. But I have a tendency to just not finish single player games. And it's mainly you're not, you're because, not alone. There's a lot of people that don't make their way all well, the way through. Well, I mean, for me, it's it's not because I'm lazy or I don't enjoy the game. It's just because my stream suffers so much for playing a game that I'm not normally playing. It's like in a great, wonderful world, I can buy Red Dead and I'll play it for a stream and you know, a couple hundred people will come and hang out. And then just over time, they'll go watch somebody else that's playing the game where they're just like, I'll come back when you're playing Starcraft. 
Mm. And it's just like those type of games require tens of hours to beat the game uh, unless you want to just like rush through it. And that's not, that's not fun because you're not getting the full experience of, of going out and, you know, talking to random NPCs and robbing fucking random people on horses and shit. Like that's the stuff you want to do. So it's like as a, as a streamer, it's just, it sucks. Like, it's just like, it's like, fuck, you can't even like enjoy it fully because everything s- suffers business wise while you're doing it. So it's just, that's, that's the way I look at it. If, if I wasn't a streamer, fuck yeah, I'd jump all over this. I'd be sitting in my, 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 my room over there on my fucking 65 inch OLED and just jerking off to how fucking awesome it looks. But that's just not my reality. So, you know, I'll try with the beta. If I love it, I, I might make that sacrifice, but it's unlikely. It's unlikely. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm going to do it because I'll review it. Um, if I wasn't reviewing it, would I buy it? Probably not. Mm. I, there, I don't know why, but ever since I played Grand Theft Auto 4, I've just kind of been off that Rockstar hype. Yeah, I know. Me too. Like, I just, uh, I played 4, I played a lot of it, and... There was something about four and everything that came, you know, like Grand Theft Auto Five or whatever that just I I don't know if I'm just over I am. Rockstar games or something. I feel like, like I just I feel like I grew out of it. Like I feel like I, I it's almost Which is weird because they they skew to an older audience to begin I know. with. Yeah. So it's a little it's a little weird. But yeah. It's I like don't. it's like watching it's like watching like um I don't know, we'll say anime. Right to say 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 it's like watching Dragon Ball Z, even though I've mm. I've never grown out of it because I love missing <laughs> Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know there are some people. I'll just use Dragon Ball Z for an example. People are like, yeah, I love Dragon Ball Z. It's just it's my it's my youth. And then they go back and they try and watch Dragon Ball Z, and they're just like, I'm over this. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just I'm just over this. Like yeah, it was fun. I can appreciate. It. I have great memories, but I'm just kind of like over it. Like I'm just like I I grew out of this. It's the it's more of the same. It it doesn't it doesn't hold its the weight that it used to. It's not as exciting, um, and and I'm saying that while GTA Five is like one of the best selling games of all time. Yeah, yeah, has yeah. Great yeah. story. Um, you know they're doing great things with the franchise. There's so nothing, there's like nothing wrong there's with nothing their games. Wrong with it. I'm just kind of yeah. over and and just about every Rockstar game is like the same. It's just a different world uh, or a different time. So we'll see. You never know. This thing could be. This thing could be great, and it could rekindle the the rock star love. It's kind of like Call of Duty, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. sort of, the, sort of the same thing. You know, you sort of kind of grow out of certain things. But yeah. Uh, right. PlayStation Now, which is like their streaming service or whatever, yeah. uh, is adding on something that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time, and that is the ability to stream or download games that are available on the service so that you can play in offline mode. So, uh, you know, if your internet were to clonk out or whatever, you still have access to your games uh, because you're paying for the service. So they're giving you that option. Uh, That includes PS2 titles because they do have a handful of PS2 titles and stuff there too. So uh, works with all DLC you might have, et cetera, et cetera. PS4 Pro features and whatnot when applicable, all that stuff is, is there. So that's mm. nice. People have been asking for that. Then the like the the more specific. Well, I'll, I'll toss this in too because I meant to move this up because uh, nobody really cares all that much. But the PlayStation Vita is finally ending production in Japan next year. That's happening. Oh, that's going to affect five people. I've I feel no bad for all five of them. For your, for your a, troubles, it's bad time. Bad mm. time. I actually think more people will be affected to the fact that they're no longer repairing PS2s over in. Japan, then that's probably not wrong. This Vita issue, that's probably not wrong. But um, as a as a a, an aside to all of this PlayStation news, um, PlayStation Mini, yes, yes, they announced that. That's that's a thing that's happening, and to the surprise of absolutely no one. Um, but here's here's my deal. Here's my What's your deal, Adam. Well, here's, tell people what people tell people what this mini is. This here, thing, this news just came okay, out. Some people okay, might not heard about uh, this. okay. Here you go. Oh, man. PlayStation Mini. You know what that that hot Nintendo thing did with the mm-hmm. NES Mini and the SNES Mini? Yes. Imagine that, but it's PlayStation. 
Wow. That's that's it. HDMI, Adam? They're, yeah, just like the others, HDMI output. How many games preloaded on that bit? 20 games are on oh, it. We only, know, we only know five of them, though, Jeff. Oh, and the five, the 15 in their pocket. The five that we know currently are, brace yourself for this shocker, Final Fantasy VII, Jumping Flash, mm. Ridge Racer Type 4, mm-hmm. Tekken 3, and Wild Arms. Those are the current that we know about. I'm going to be real. I give a fuck about maybe two of those games. Maybe. Two out of five is not bad. It's not bad. I'm very interested in what the other 15 could possibly be. Here's the deal, though. I'm, I'm, this, is, this is my own personal bias. I never owned the PlayStation. I had to re- rely on my friends that owned the PlayStation because... Uh, I had the N64, and I wasn't about to be able to convince my parents suddenly that I needed more than one console in the house at any given time. And so, um, most of my PlayStation hype was at uh, Brian's house growing up, and uh, in bits and pieces at yours when we had the modded one, and we, uh, which was after I think the PlayStation 2 came out, and we were going back and playing PlayStation 1 games. Mm-hmm. Um, almost exclusively Japanese RPGs is what I played on the PlayStation. I didn't really go far outside of that. I played Crash Bandicoot. I played, um, the first Spyro, uh, and then the rest were basically Japanese RPGs. I don't honest to God think that there was much beyond that. Uh, so... For me, the odds of me getting particularly excited about the lineup of this thing, just based on my experience and, and you know, bias for what, uh, what I played on the console, probably not going to be my thing. Mm. Um, but I'm sure a lot of other people are pretty jazzed about this, pretty hyped, but there are also some people that aren't so happy about it for uh, uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, I'll explain that, and then I'll let you, I'll, I'll ask you what your thoughts on this whole bad boy is. Mm-hmm. So the first thing is the price of this thing ninety nine U S dollar uh, for for the package doesn't come with an AC adapter for ninety nine dollars. You don't get an AC adapter. You get a USB cable. Um, Wee! Better kind get of, that adapter, bitches. Ex- most it's kind people, of most people have them, like you know. But, they yeah. may like one laying around if it matches the voltage to like plug in or some shit. I, that's yeah. They should just get fucking just it's an AC adapter. How expensive is an AC adapter? Just fucking include one for God's sake. And then uh, they're uh, they're doing the same like you know, it seems like people are concerned they're going to do the same 3 foot long cable bullshit that Nintendo did. Mm. Where you had to basically like suspension bridge the the console with the controller and the, and your fucking TV input uh cuz all the cables were too short. So people are hoping that doesn't happen. But yeah, so the, the, uh, the price people aren't too keen on. I don't know. I, I personally, I don't give a shit. I think $99 is fine. I just wish it came with a AC adapter. Um, and then the second thing that people aren't happy about is that I don't even have it written down here. I read it just after I had written uh, these notes or written these notes is that people are taking it as a bit of a slap in the face for backwards compatibility on the PlayStation 4. Um, in the sense that a lot of PlayStation people have been watching Xbox slowly add to their Xbox and Xbox 360 backwards catalog on the Xbox One and the Xbox One X that get, you know, the bump in resolution and all the shit. You just need to have the disc. You put the disc in, the, the emulator takes over, and you're off to the races. Uh, as long as they have it in the list of their their games, which again, keeps getting bigger and bigger as time goes on. PlayStation doesn't really have that. They have a handful of titles for their, their now service that, uh, limited to not very many games. And so when this comes around, people started going, just give us backwards compatibility. Just allow us to play these games that we already have. Don't make us pay a hundred dollars to play them again. Just like, just fucking even xbox it's been doing literally everything wrong this entire generation even they have it so please so those are the two biggest uh, complaints i've seen i can 
the price, whatever, AC adapter should be included. I kind of get where they're coming from from the backwards compatibility standpoint. I don't think this is the hill to die on for it. But it does surprise me that the company that previously spent so much effort doing backwards compatibility with PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 1, and then in the early days, trying at the very least, trying to do PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 2 and 1, I think, um, for them to just start tossing all that out, not doing anything, and then release something like this, I can kind of see why people would be a little bit wishy-washy about it. But Nintendo does, I mean, Nintendo, because they use cartridges and all sorts of media, it's not like Nintendo can put out a console and be like, we're backwards compatible with, you know, Nintendo 64 cartridges and GameCube discs. Nintendo wouldn't do that anyway. So. Yeah, so it's, it's whatever. So, I, I like, Sony's seeing it, they're smart, they're doing it, it's there. Final Fantasy VII's on there, that makes at least five people happy. What's your hot take on this? Are you interested? Do you need to see the rest of the games list? Let me know what's up. All right. Um, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of thinking, and I and and really and I knew, on this I, specifically. Yes. Or is this yes. sarcasm? No, no. <laughs> I, I've I've been. I mean, look, I collect video games, True. right? This I, is this is like this is something right. that uh, fair. You know, I've been. I knew we were going to talk about it, so I refrained from talking about it on the stream. Let's go. Uh, so I was like, all right, I'll wait until. Oh, uh, now podcast. I'm ready. Now I'm ready. Hit me. All right. So uh, okay, let let me go. Let me let me answer the cross compatibility uh, thing, or at least give you my point of view. Okay. The reason the reason why Sony, um, in my opinion, when you you nailed it, like when they first came out with the PS2, you know, with the cross compatibility with the PS1, and then even with the PS3, there's like that sixty uh, sixty gig one where you can play PS2 and PS1 games on it. It's like a super sought after machine. It's the original run. One. It's like the yes, and they stopped it like six and then they months stopped, in. They like say fuck you guys. Enough of this. Yeah. Um. That was awesome because people could just they'd have to have one console set up. The vast majority of games could play right on that bad boy, and you were off to the races. I think the main reason why Sony isn't doing that now, and they're 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 withholding from doing cross compatibility. Um, on this generation consoles mm. and I would say even next generation consoles is because now we're in a different time. The people that enjoyed those games back then, now there's a nostalgic factor. It's no longer it's no longer just the next generation anymore. We're talking gener we're talking two, maybe even three for the next generation consoles back. So people for the most part, casuals i mean there's diehards that are still playing the games they love but casuals there is that nostalgic it's like the movie business where they're where they're rebooting some old 80s and 90s movies and it's it's mainly because instead of like digitally re-releasing them which they do but they're they're just remaking them and and using that nostalgic factor and i think that's exactly what all these companies are doing now i think that's the reason why nintendo doesn't push uh, all their stuff uh, on on these markets all at once and make things available is because they're 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 slowly releasing this stuff out. They're creating demand or giving little bits at a time, reeling new people in. Sony's no different. I think I think what Sony's doing is very um, it's business savvy. It's smart. They're they're tapping into um, a, a, a a love for their old games that they know that they can resell and they can resell at a high price. I mean, this is this is a hundred U.S. dollars. And we're talking 150 bucks Canadian when it's all said and done. Taxes, $150. That's what? More than half the price of a of a Nintendo Switch. Um, that's expensive. And I actually have a bit of a problem with the price. I think it's a little bit too expensive, honestly. But I think it's I think it's priced to the point where people are gonna buy it. Um, I'm likely going to buy one just because, I mean, the sake of $20, I would have loved to have seen it at $79.99, maybe like the, the price of an actual game. Um, just because we're, we're getting, we're, we're, all we're doing is just getting these digital, uh, releases uh, on, on these and it's 20 games and who knows what the other 15 are. Um, the five that I'm seeing here, good choices. Uh, some of them I probably would never touch. Uh, but for the most part, I think unless they have some fire for these other 15 games, this isn't going to sell the way that 
I think they they think it's going to sell. I I think if they if they throw in things like uh, a twisted metal, if they throw in things like uh, um, like uh, Gran Turismo, I was going to say Gran um, Turismo, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, Crash Bandicoot, a a Spyro, um, uh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, I don't think you you're going to see Spyro or or, or well, Crash because they're re- they just did the remastered Crash and Spyro's coming in November. Exactly. Um, you know, or they could use it as a selling point where it's like, hey, you enjoy that? Well, why don't you buy the remastered one as well? Who knows? But uh, <laughs> for for the most part, I think they're and and, and if I think they're going to have something like Metal Gear, they're probably going to have you know some some of those games I, I, I I've listed. I don't think we're going to get too much more JRPGs or RPGs in general. Uh, just because there's already two of them on there, uh, Wild Arms and uh, Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy VII. VII. Yeah. I don't see them having too, too many more RPGs than that. I think there'll be a couple of racing ones. We already have one. Uh, Tekken 3 is a great choice. Um, so there's there's some good games on there, but they're going to need, out of these 15 games, or they're going to need like another five games that are really, really great titles. Same with the 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 SNES Mini. Uh, when they when they're putting in like Earthbound and uh, a couple of these other uh, big titles, those are those are the sellers. So for the most part, I think what's going to happen is this. I think uh, Sony doesn't even know what the other 15 games are. I think they're going. I think they're they They put out these five. They have to put out Final Fantasy seven because that's like their staple game. That's gonna sell. That's gonna sell. It's a almost a copies, meme, right? given given it the fact that you know the state of the of the remaster or the remake. It is. It is. And and so that's great. <laughs> but I think what they're gonna do now is they're gonna wait and listen to the the fans, and they're gonna be reading forums. They're gonna be listening to podcasts and reviews, and they're gonna be want? showing tweets. What do people want? Not only that, I I think there's also licensing issues where there's some big games that they love that they don't have licensing rights rights to anymore. Which so is exactly why to, Xbox's backwards compatibility goes the way it is, where they have to go back to the license holders and go, "Hey exactly. guys, do you hey. mind if?" Exactly. Yeah. So I think they're gonna go go through some of those if if they can get a little bit more uh, like solid titles on there. I'm okay with the hundred bucks. But if it's going to be a bunch of like, you know, if there's going to be like five really solid titles, but the rest are just kind of shit that nobody's going to really, really like, I'd like to see like a Tony Hawks or you know, some, some like, uh, uh, like pro skater two or something. pro skater two, uh, you know, moto jet, um, some like really, uh, games that are just iconic for, for the PS one. Then I think it's going to do I think Eve. It's Parasite Eve. Exactly. Uh, Silent Crisis. Hill. Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Um, that would be a great game to put on there. And that's sold extremely well. So it really boils. It's, this thing is going to sell like hotcakes. But Sony needs to needs to proceed with caution because this could be a massive hit. And or it could just be a like, eh, you know, it, it did what Nintendo did, but not as good. Um. Here's here's why I'm gonna buy one. Not uh, there's two reasons. Number one is I collect <laughs> this, games. And this is cool. this is sounding on, like the same way I started the conversation. I know. About my number number <laughs> number two. Here's the other. Here's the other big reason is there's gonna be people. <laughs> I mean, well, listen. Oh, no, no, and it's not. No, I'm not. It just sounds identical. That's why it's I funny. Know. It's not the cost. It's just hilarious because it's okay. framed exactly it's the doing. same way. It's, yeah, it's, it's the, what you're doing. <laughs> is um, it a tax rate object? It is. All okay, right. Just I'll make sure. <laughs> the other, the other big thing is, is the, these consoles are moddable. So people right. are going to mod this. Now I don't know how how much storage is on these on these little machines. And unlike the NES Mini and stuff, those those games basically are a fucking couple, you know, kilobytes. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Who, kn- who knows? Who knows what? You know, we're talking megabytes here, right? Probably in the in the hundreds of megabytes. It depends. I think uh, most of them can float between thirty and forty. I think. Okay. Um, well, unless it's a bad. JRPG, then it just gets real. Yeah, like four discs. You know, yeah. like Final Fantasy or something. Yeah, yeah. But um, what what gets me excited is the possibility to mod this thing. And if there's going to be hard drive add-ons or whatever type of hard drive they have on there, being able to have like 50 or 60 of your favorite PS1 games preloaded onto this bad boy in HDMI, just a plug and go, and it comes with two controllers, that, that is a reason to buy this thing. 
um, is is being able to mod it. Now, obviously, I wouldn't care to mod it if some of those other 15 games are really, really great titles. I, I but just realized I just lied to you. It's definitely not 30 or 40 meg. I just totally lied to you. I'm thinking SNES games. This is this oh, okay. is PlayStation One is somewhere around between 700 megabyte to get it onto a single CD, right? So if a, a maximum, I think a CD was 700 megs. So you can look at it somewhere between four and 700 until you're into multi disc and go okay. and go from there. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. So it it all depends on the type of hard drive is in there, but I'm sure you'll be able to add your own hard drive um, and and mod them. People are gonna mod the shit out of these. And they're gonna they're gonna turn this. There'll, there'll probably be mods where you have the whole entire PlayStation library mm. uh, loaded on loaded onto this, which would be incredible. Uh, just scrolling through how easy it is to find a game and go, instead of plugging in and and hoping that your discs work and and everything is is kosher. And, Until and Sony pulls a Nintendo and starts taking down all of the ROM sites, and yeah, then we're well, back at square one. Nin- there's nothing they can do about when people are, <laughs> people are just you know roaming roaming the hell out of this stuff. So um, that's why I'm excited. I'm not I'm not excited about the price. I think it's a bit too expensive. But uh, I'm I'm like the other the other Sony lovers out there. I'm gonna buy it. PS One is one of my favorite consoles of all time. Uh, there's unlike you, I, I actually own the console and I've played. Mm-hmm. I mean, probably playing RPGs was the least thing I've done. And the mm. only reason why I played so many of them, because I was friends with you Yeah, yeah. and, and we played, you know, we played all, you know, the, the our final fantasies and whatever Chrono Cross and whatever else we could stick our dick in. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I think it's great. I don't give a shit about the USB plugin. They, like you said, they probably should add it in there. Uh, but, it's not a deal breaker for me. It's just, no, oh, it's not a well, deal breaker. I just, just find it, it strange. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's like, dumb, yeah. I'm trying to figure out where they think, I mean, people, there are USB plugins on TVs and shit now, but like, uh, how many people, uh, people just want to have a fucking AC adapter, plug it into a freaking yeah. socket and call it. Like, I don't understand yeah. what their usage, what, like how they envision people <laughs> utilizing these things. Like they must well, think that they're going to use it on their computer or something, I guess. Well, or, appar- I was reading an article on it and apparently in Japan, it's, it's almost uh, becoming a norm that, um, these, uh, hardware things, uh, they're not coming with, with, uh, with AC adapters. Really? So I don't know. I mean, you would think knowing that your shit's going to sell pretty well globally, globally, you should probably add one in there, but whatever it is, what it is. Yeah. The PS one, we'll see what the other games are. Like I said, I don't think they know exactly what the other 15 are. I'm sure some of them, they, they do know. And I think we'll get them in stages. I think we'll hear about another five in a few weeks or a month and then another five and so on and so forth. And, and Bob's your uncle. Yeah, for sure. That, that'll be, it, it will definitely be, and we'll come back to it when we know the rest of the games list and we'll be able to talk about the rest of the games list. But um, yeah, obviously it has a very deep library and yeah. they definitely need a couple of heavy hitters in there if they're going to charge 99 bucks. It's got to be really freaking good. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, because right now it's like the fuck. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> like that was my, my first thought was like, if you're going to only release five titles out of 20, Maybe yeah. have better games. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it, remember, it's only twenty games too. All right, that's yeah, less than like, the NES, and that's less than the than the NES. You know, people are already in their mind going, "I'm used to getting these many games. Why yeah. am I spending a hundred dollars on this?" And so on and so forth. So exactly, we'll see. We'll comp- We'll comment more on it when we get more information. Yeah, when we get, uh, I'm not mad about it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, Seth Rogen blew my mind this week on Twitter, Jeff. Okay. I had literally no idea that this was a thing, but he had a tweet that went viral where he was saying that, in case you didn't know, the ducks in Duck Hunt could be controlled by a second controller. Wow. Player two controller controlled the ducks in Duck Hunt. I actually had no I had, fucking I played clue. a shitload of Duck Hunt. I had two controllers. Every, I never in a million years... And he said the only reason he found out is because he accidentally sat on a controller once when he was a kid or some shit. They don't, I don't, is that even in the manual? Do you have the manual? Let me go, let me go check. Like, let's see. Like, yeah. Because I, like, I don't, I don't recall seeing that written anywhere or anything like that. But apparently, yeah, that blew my mind. I had no idea that that was the case. I could have been trolling people for years. 
Oh, Stuka is saying it is in the manual. Oh, Mr. Black is coming back with the manual. Stuka, right, Stuka me... is saying apparently it is in the manual. Oh, I'm checking right now. Uh, where's Duck Hunt? Speaking of manuals, games need to have manuals again. Yeah, they don't even come with them anymore. It was you don't weird. Get, you don't get shit. Okay, here we go. Uh, controller one, select button, duck hunt, press start to begin with the zapper. Operation of the zapper, how to play. Um, each round uh, ends after 10 ducks have flown out of the thicket. Pass line at the bottom of the screen indicates the minimum number of ducks. Oh, here we go. Two players. A game can also be played with two players. One player is the hunter. The other player controls the ducks horizontally How? and vertically with the controller pad. How did I not know this? Trying to avoid the hunter's shots until the sky color changes. Ducks automatically escape when the sky color changes. It's in the fucking manual. That's fucking wild, dude. Thousands and thousands and probably millions of people had no clue. And it was in the manual. Wow. Nuts. That's wild. Nuts. I had no idea. Dang. That's crazy. That's crazy. Damn. Uh, I guess that's a case for not having manuals, because obviously we didn't read it carefully enough. Yeah, but it's just like, it's just, it's just one of those things that like, I just don't know even how. If you don't read, even if you don't read the manual, nobody ever talks about no. it. It's like anybody that I've ever played Duck Hunt with. Have never been like, yo, bro, pick up that controller and fucking move these ducks exactly. around. I bet you can't. I bet you can't shoot me, bitch. There was none of that. It was just like, yeah, you know, waiting for your turn. <laughs> That's just nuts. Crazy. Absolutely nuts. Uh, all right, we're getting we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. We got Halo Infinite, which is the the next Halo game that's coming up. We talked about it, I think, uh, several casts before. Uh, talking about how there was the announcement that there will be microtransactions of some kind in the game. They have come out and clarified, or one of the guys have come out and clarified to make sure that people understand that there will be zero paid loot boxes. So there will be microtransactions, but they won't be for loot boxes. boxes. Okay. Uh, which, you know, signals to me that it sounds an awful lot like you're just buying yeah. cosmetics. Which is fine. If you're going to yes. do it, that's great. Go ahead. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Halo. You're already better than Overwatch. Good job. Nailed it. Uh, and now on to our thoughts about the Call of Duty Blackout memes. Mm. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you start. Uh, how did you feel? About uh, about Call of Duty's stab at the battle royale genre. Um, if I had to give it a a, a rating out of ten, mm. I sure. give it an eight point five. <sighs> I give it a, a solid eight point five. Um, obviously there were some server issues. Mm. Um, because everybody in their fucking dog. Uh, was playing that and, uh, you know, having 88 people in, inside a game and they're testing out servers. It's a beta for a reason. So I'm not, I am not going to harp on them for that. I did have um, some fatal errors where the game would just crash randomly. That that happened about five times. Um, and I've had two of the lobbies where it was so laggy um, that uh, you had to basically back out and jump mm. into another one. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, the game ran like butter. Um, the shooting feels good. The guns sound great. Um, the there's okay. I I I realize that it's been a long time since I played a Call of Duty game, mm -hmm. so I'm not I'm not great at uh Call of Duty. It was probably also um, the first Call of Duty you played on a PC, which was my experience as well. Yeah, that too. So it's just it's it's very uh, it's just different. Um, there's a lot of camping in this Call of Duty as well. Uh. Which, oh, it's which the genre with is the genre which yeah. I was you know after playing things like uh, Realm Royale so much or or even Fortnite where it's just kind of the opposite where it's it's very very aggressive and mm. and Call of Duty can be aggressive too but I, I've died much more to people sitting in corners and waiting uh, than more than anything um, and and you know what that's just I'm not hating I'm not like downing the game for that I'm just it's just a different type of battle royale yeah, that's how it's how people play it yeah, yeah it's how people play Call of Duty. Um, so, so that's whatever. 
Uh, I liked the little zombie zones. I thought that was a cool little thing, and the, you know, it was it created a little bit more um, uh, havoc. It was like a little bit. It was just something else to worry about. Uh, it was cool seeing other people shoot zombies while you're shooting at them and shit like that. My biggest gripe of the game, uh, mechanically, is the looting. Um, I think it's a it's a gong show of a mess. I think the um, when you're when you're tabbing into your menus and you're switching weapons uh you're just looking at all of these different add-ons because like throughout call of duty i haven't played for years but there's rc cars and there's fucking uh you know shield uh there's there's armor for one which is another gripe i think the armor is a little bit too armory like a level three armor it's like killing somebody two and a half times um but that's whatever it's it's just there's so many different pieces like there's there's a bunch of add-ons for guns, which I love variety and it's great and they look cool and that's awesome, but they all look the same in the menu. It's like I have to, I have to physically sit there in a room and kind of like hover over shit and read what it is and and it all looks the same. So I'm putting things where they shouldn't go or trying to put things on where they don't. And that could be just inexperience for me from not playing other Call of Duties, but they have to understand that battle royales are a big deal now. And they're going to be attracting a new flock of 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 players uh, in, into this. And there's there's like just standards when it comes to battle royales that I think the vast majority of other battle royales do better than Call of Duty when it comes to uh, add ons and just just the way things look like there's all those cases that you can get where you can jump and not take take damage for a period of time. And then there's like better, better sense of things around perks. you. And those, that's what perks. those are. Remember no, with perks you. back perks, in the day, yes. it's that I do. they're just time specific and you have to yes. pick them up now. So yes, uh, I'm not a fan of those because all the I perks, because all the perks look the same. All the cases look the same. They're not even color coded. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just, it's a mess. It requires too much thinking. Um, it, well, it's it not should, thinking. It just takes too much time looking and reading looking at, at what yes. you have because yes. everything looks the same. Yes. That's yeah. my biggest gripe. And it really does hinder, um, the, the, I wouldn't say the fun of the game, but the pace of the game. Like, cause mm. I feel, I felt I, I spent more time in the beta reading up on things and actually just fucking playing. I found myself at, at one point for like the last few hours I played just not fucking with perks at all. Just not putting any of it on, not picking the shit up, just making sure I got my red dot or my two X zoom or my three X zoom. Uh, and I've got my bandages, which I think it's great that you can heal and run and stuff. And, and uh, I thought, I thought that was uh, very well done, but overall, the, the the playing experience of it uh, driving driving the 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 vehicles flying the helicopter um picking up rpgs that is fun that's some fun shit it's a it's a really well done battle royale it's the pubg killer when that game comes out uh it's going to be for in north my opinion, america and europe for, for anyway. north america i mean china's yeah. going to do what china does yeah, yeah, and yeah. china's just filled with hackers and it's a gong show but I mean, for the North American scene, which let's be real here, that's all that really matters to us. Uh, well, it's all know, that matters it, to Call of Duty too. So all, that, and that exactly, it's all that matters yeah. to fuck Call of Duty as well. Um, and here on Twitch and stuff like that, right? So yeah, this yeah. is our world. I mean, I'm not talking globally, but for the most part, Call of Duty will will be the will be the battle royale under Fortnite, and I think it's going to do really really well. And uh, I think it's going to help out, uh, you know, Call of Duty's name and gen and and. The grand scheme of things, I think it's going to help them sell future games, uh, whether it's Battle Royale or not. Um, the fact that it's on the Blizzard, uh, it's so weird, man. Seeing, it is seeing a bit buying, weird, a, yeah. buying a buying a Call of Duty game right on the Battle.net um, a launcher is just fucking weird, but it's convenient. Um, it's it's just they know what they're doing, man. It's fucking well done, you know. And I want to hate Call of Duty. I wanna I want to be that guy. I want to be that guy that's like, you guys are morons for buying Call of Duty games, but this is the one to buy. If you're buying a Call of Duty game, this is it. This is the one. If you, especially if you like uh, zombies or battle royales, because you're getting two, you're getting both modes. Yeah, I, got, I can't shit on it too much. I, I, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's not for me. It's not yeah. for me personally, but it's good. And I'm still likely going to buy the game, and I'll still fuck with it because it is fun. Uh, I was playing uh, some some team game, uh, like some squads. Squads are so much. Squads are fun in Call of Duty. 
uh, it's the solo stuff that's a little like, eh, you know, it's another battle royale. But with squads, yeah. man, it's it's fun. Yeah. Um. So I played exclusively in duos and squads when I played. Yeah. Good choice. Um. I just didn't see because I solos. I d- solos in 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 that in this genre are I think just garbage anyway it's not the best way to play the game you're not getting the best experience and it yeah. and it dramatically increases camping when you when you're solos because and that's not not just in call of duty that's pretty much every battle royale you play solos odds are you're gonna run into people hiding in corners because they're by themselves they get scared they do the 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 hide and shoot game with the shotgun so yeah. um um i'm gonna give it a seven out of ten personally Okay. Um, but that's just for the beta, right? Like the, and and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm taking performance out of it when I give it that rating, because obviously it's a beta. Um, the one performance metric I I will, you know, call them out on, and since they didn't label it anywhere or say that it was only for the beta or whatever, I will hold them to this until it changes is the server refresh rate was only 10 hertz, which is absolutely fucking abysmal. So even if the servers were running well, you were still going to see a bunch of desync bullshit, shots not hitting, people doing weird crap. 10 hertz is fucking terrible. Uh, that's worse than PUBG by a relatively considerable margin. And you do not want to be under PUBG in basically any statistic that you could possibly imagine. There shouldn't be one. Because PUBG is pretty crap across the board. So, 10 hertz, that needs to change. Objectively. There is actually zero excuse for that to be the case. If it doesn't change, the community, I'm telling you right now, will ream the fuck out of them for it until it changes. So, other than that, performance-wise, I'm not going to call them out on anything. The game ran, uh, like you said, like butter. It ran, well, it ran like a Call of Duty game, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. They made a bunch of sacrifices to visual fidelity in order to hit that level of of butter performance, right yeah but uh, it, it was performant at 1080 if you went north of 1080 shit started getting a little difficult um it's definitely not the most optimized at this at this juncture it is not the most optimized uh but when you got your settings down uh yeah ran like butter looked pretty good i'm not going to say it looked great uh but it looked it looked good enough, I guess, is what people will probably say about this game. Nobody's going to sit there and say the game is a graphical fucking powerhouse. No, no, no. In any capacity. Um, Pop-in was really bad. Like, I'm running through a field of cabbages and I'm watching shit pop up three and a half feet in front of me. Um, uh, the, the textures were really rough. Uh, like, not very good at all. And that's not even just up close. Like, from a distance up close didn't really matter. The textures were kind of bad. Um, so it, it wasn't a great looker, but it didn't matter because it ran really smoothly, which is probably the most important thing for a, a lot of people. So that was nice. Like you said, squads were, were, were definitely, um, fun. It was a good time in that regard. Uh, I too haven't played call. I mean, I haven't played call of duty since modern warfare two, and that was on the Xbox 360. So I was just a gong show, just an absolute unadulterated shit fest and that's after 500 hours of PUBG, which really hurt me actually because every time i wanted to do something my brain was seeing PUBG on the screen and i was doing it's not PUBG. the opposite of everything yeah. so I, I was accidentally throwing grenades i was fucking like uh i wasn't i wasn't holding down to zoom i was i was thinking i had it toggled uh you know things like that i know you could change that shit but i didn't want to change it like I wanted I PUBG. changed everything. I, I changed all of it. Oh my really? Settings. I yeah. wanted I wanted PUBG forever to have a hold to to aim down sight forever because I think it's a way more optimal thing to have. But I so I couldn't change it. But I I eventually got over it. I, it didn't kill me too many times. It only really killed me if I got into a fight where I wasn't the one shooting first. Yeah. Because at that point it was it was muscle memory. It, I wasn't thinking about my shot. It was me just reacting. And when that happened, I was just fuck absolute tits up terrible. So that was bad. But I still had a pretty good uh, time with it. I too don't like the perks. I don't think the perks should be in that period. I think it should be taken yeah, out. And it's not yeah. it's not just about their it's not just only about the fact that they all look the same. 
<laughs> which yeah, makes do. it which because they yeah. do uh and 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 that's inefficient uh inefficient visuals um i just don't think they belong in a in 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 that game type at all um it's it adds it adds too much randomness to how much of an advantage a person can have and one too many times did I get run up on from behind, no matter how much I was checking corners and everything else, with somebody who had like like the ninja perk or whatever, where no footsteps, you don't hear shit, and they yeah. just have a shotgun and they run up on me and they pump me once in the tits and I'm dead. It's usually from behind. Yeah. That's just, that's not fun for anyone. I, that that might be marginally fun for that guy who just gets killed by my squad immediately afterwards because he's standing out in the fucking open with a shotgun. But like uh, that, I don't think that that kind of stuff adds value. A lot of people are probably going to disagree with me on that. That's fine. But f in my tastes, I don't think that you. they yeah, they belong. You. Yeah, I don't think they belong in that in that uh, capacity. Perks work if they're a permanent thing that you choose a set of at the beginning of a match, like it's been in Call of Duty forever. You start adding a random element to it and various times in which they can work and all this other shit. I just don't think it's worth it to have. Just get rid of it. Um, other than that, yeah, like uh, there's not really that much to harp on it. It's no, a, it's a, no. it's it's a battle royale that works and um, it it works well, even considering it was in a beta. I think it's very telling from a performance standpoint that they're only allowing eighty people in a match and not a hundred. Um, it, was it 88? I thought it was just 80. 88. Is it? Okay. Yeah, they upped it. Oh, okay. So maybe are, maybe eventually they go for 100. I don't know if that was a beta only thing, but it mm. is still telling that it's very strenuous to have 100 people in a match uh, like that. Um, yeah, outside of that. That's oh, yeah, my, my other thing was, my other thing was, I'm not a fan of games that are supposed to be taking place pretty much in reality to some degree, like Call of Duty, that just take weapons and just call them random shit. Mm. Because now I have to relearn. I know this is going to sound really fucking prima donna, but if I'm playing PUBG and I pick up a UMP, I know what the fuck a UMP is because I've played a million other games that have a UMP in it. I know what it is. I know it's an SMG. I know it's close quarters for the most part. I know it's got a fully automatic function. We're mm -hmm. good to go. Mm -hmm. I know if I pick up an AK-47, I definitely know what the fuck that thing does. I know mm -hmm. if I pick up an M16. And Call of Duty used to also have that shit. I don't know if only certain Call of Duties do and didn't. I don't fucking know. But in this game, I went in expecting that. I started picking up guns going... Yeah. What does this gun do? Is it single that is fire? The same, that's is the it... same thing. I, I went through, I actually yelled about that several times because I get into a, a, a gun fight and I go, what the fuck? This is a burst gun. And I'm sitting there just trying to hold down yeah. the trigger because it looks like it's a, like a machine gun or a semi-automatic. You just don't and know. And so what I would do is I'd start picking up a gun and I'd just do a couple of fires uh, just to see the, the rate of fire, like what kind of gun it yeah. was because I just didn't know. And I never and, thought about that until you, like a complaint and, and, until you just said it. And maybe according to Stuka, they don't make or invent weapons. They have variants of, and prototypes. If that's the case, then I, I mean, it's still kind of the same thing at the end of the day for me personally. Maybe there's a lot of gun nuts out there that, that know all Miracle. these variants of all these Miracle. different guns. But the other thing was once I found that out, I was, and maybe it exists, but I couldn't see it in the UI. In PUBG, you can see you know, fire modes and stuff. You can see, mm -hmm. am I in, am I in single fire? Am I in full auto? Am I yeah. in burst? Yeah. I couldn't, I personally, it might be there. Somebody can check and let me know, but I didn't see. So when I picked up a gun until I fired it, there were times I was in the squad. I was like, all right, guys, you're about to hear me shoot. I'm going to find out what the fuck this oh, gun does. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I'd have, I'd have, like what Helly just said, I'd have a shotgun where, where it, it's, it looks like a fucking futuristic machine gun and I'm sitting there and I'm shooting it's going bow and I'm like what the and I'm sitting here and I'm fighting a guy yeah. from like from my house to your house <laughs> thinking I can hit him and I'm sitting there shooting a fucking shotgun and I'm like the fuck is this and next thing I'm dead yep. right yeah. so you know it's it's that's a mess too but yeah. it's something that you get used to but still as a person that's just jumping in it's like the fuck yeah it's a bit it's, it's a bit jarring as yeah. for my personal tastes 
Uh, the guns don't have nearly enough recoil. Uh, everything's a fucking laser beam in that mm. game. Um, there's something, and this is going to be an only Adam thing. There is something about the animation for aiming down the sights that completely fucks with me. I can never aim properly at somebody before aiming down sights and get that whole motion in. I'm always like way off to the fucking right, way off to the left. Like I never feel like I, um, it's weird. I don't know what it is uh, about the animation, but it fucks with me. Uh, and so it, I was, I was even less effective, even after I had like my sensitivity dialed in and everything, I was still shit. Cause I, my first like seven shots, I was shooting a ninja, an invisible ninja next to the guy that I was trying to fucking kill. Um, mm. but yeah, so that's, that's my take on it. It's a seven out of 10. If you like call of duty, it's probably even higher. Um, I agree that I think that this is going to open up Call of Duty to a whole bunch of people that haven't played Call of Duty before. It's also going to open up Call of Duty to a bunch of people who have walked away from the franchise for years and years and years, and now we're going to come back to it. Um, mm. do I think it's worth the price? Th uh, my it is if you're into battle royales and you like zombies. Yeah, it so sure as fuck is. yeah, so it's it's multiplayer only, and there is absolutely something to be said about. You know, you get your money back, you know, your money's worth based on how much you play a game. And it doesn't matter what comes with it. It's yeah. if you play said game for long enough, you have got your money's yeah. worth. Yeah. I know that that is objectively the truth, but my brain has never been able to get past that shit. If I play, if I buy a game and it's multiplayer only in, and it's in the year of our Lord 2018, most of that shit's free. Especially in this genre, the most expensive is PUBG, and that's at like what thirty something bucks. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, somebody's going to have to pay seventy nine. Yeah. They're getting bucks that zombie. Tax. They're getting that zombies uh, well, too, right? I, no, I, I get. Love I, the I, I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. There's a reason why we got a beta for this shit. They know that this is going to be what makes the money. Mm -hmm. People are going to buy it for this mode. There are going to be people that are diehard zombie fans that will buy for zombies, but if they're making real big money on a game that doesn't have a single player campaign, it's because it's got a battle royale mode. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm just saying for me, I have a harder time wanting to spend money on it. Even if I knew that I would play it, let's say for a hundred hours, which would be my money back for sure. That's less than a dollar an hour. When, yeah. yeah, when, when, um, that, you know, games in the genre exist that are, that are less than or free that provide yeah. as good or depending on how you look at it, better experience. So yeah. like, I'm not saying it's not for 98% of people, the value is there. This is going to absolutely crush it on Twitch. Um, Doc himself guaranteed will never even shit in the general direction of PUBG oh, again yeah, after this game it's comes done. out. And yeah. so will many other people, unless they're already locked into some weird contractual bullshit to play PUBG. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a seriously heavy hitter. I don't know if I'm going to do it. Um, I haven't decided yet. Be for the reasons you know the perks thing and things like that. It's it's a good game, but I don't know if it's my if it's like my uh, time Battle will Royale, tell. But there's time another, will, there's gonna be another beta next month. So time will tell. Yeah, we'll for sure. Time to, we're, to play it. Uh, we're coming up on it. Well, it's only like 22 days until the thing releases. What are they gonna do? A beta leading right up to the release or something? Yeah, I think there I think there's another uh, open beta or something like that, like the first week of October. Hmm. Well, then that's great. I'll yeah. probably hop in and try it again, see if they change some shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then I wanted to I wanted to say I agree about the armor. That was the last thing I forgot. Armor's yeah. bullshit in that game. It's a bit much. Yeah, the people bit much. people are such bullet sponges. Like you can yeah. get in the situation where you shoot first. It doesn't matter. And, and you're still armor, and you're, you're still dead. So it's yeah. like it, which should never fucking happen. Unless yeah. you fuck up royally, you shooting first should almost exclusively, eighty plus percent of the time, result in you winning that because you've tactically outplayed the fuck out of the person. It shouldn't be I'm walking around with a mock truck worth of armor on me, I'm gonna turn around and just kill you now. That's yeah. a bit silly. Uh hit me up with some movies and TV. Movies and TV, TV, movies, movies.
Captain Marvel, Jeff, we had the trailer come out. Mm -hmm. It happened. First trailer released. Hot take on that trailer. What you got? Uh, I was, I was left underwhelmed, uh, by the trailer. Honestly, mm. uh, I liked, I liked the blockbuster, uh, bit they did at the beginning. I thought <laughs> that was cool. Uh, well, it does take place in the nineties. Right? Yeah. 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 It takes place in the nineties. So that, that was cool. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Captain, uh, Captain Marvel. I don't, I don't know her, her story. This isn't an origin story, but there's going to be a bunch of flashbacks of of kind of showing. She even kind of uh, elates to it a little bit in in the trailer, like with her. I think I remember this and blah blah blah. So it's going to show mm -hmm. you parts of it. Probably how she got her powers. There's like one scene where uh, it's actually quite a beautiful looking scene where she's she gets blown up by this huge amount of energy, and apparently yeah. that's like uh, they're changing her origin her story a bit for this. And apparently, I just read this as well. From the comic books, they're actually they've they've kind of shot out a last minute kind of low key update to make it coincide with okay. the the origin yeah. to make it fit more with the the current Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks it looks good. Um, it's a different feel to a Marvel film that I've seen in a long time. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, she punches the grandma, but that's that's actually a a a. a Oh fuck! I think it's called like a skull or it's or totally a, a, not mystique. Mystique. Yeah, it's 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 like a creature that can take shape of other things. So, um, but anyway, it looks it looks good. But but with all this like all this hype around this movie and 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 um, how she plays such a huge role in the next Avengers and who's ultimately you know probably going to be the a Skrill or whatever. Yeah. Uh, scroll. I don't know what the fuck it's called, but or some Skrilla, some Skrilla. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I expected, I expected a little bit more. Uh, I got more excited over the Wonder Woman trailer and and getting to know Wonder Woman than what Wonder I Woman have. Was fire! Oh, it was an awesome movie. Fire! Um, and I'm and I'm sure this is gonna be this is gonna be good. So here's my biggest, here's my biggest gripe with Captain Marvel. And it's a bad, and I and I and I don't even want to say it. I wonder if it's the same gripe I have. I don't even want to say it because if I do, everybody is is going to see this when they see Captain Marvel and the actress that plays. Uh, I don't even know her name that plays Captain Marvel. This chick looks, and even in the movie. Or in the trailer, in the trailer, there's not many scenes of her smiling and having a good time. It's like it's like super serious or like angry or or just like fucking mean mugging. Brie Olson, that's her name. She looks a hell of a lot like Ronda Rousey, and I mean a lot. If you go and rewatch that trailer, no, I, no I'm not it, disagreeing with you. you. It, I, I can you put this little fucking. Like that little mole thing that Ronda Rousey's got on her on her cheek. It the way she it, it's like I already know like the the and the reason why and, and I'm not saying that takes me out of well it does a little bit. It's it's mainly because Ronda Rousey is such a shit actress. She's so bad, and and the only expression that Ronda can make is a mean face. And her mean face looks like she's trying to make a mean face. She can't even do that naturally. It's just this constant, you know, like just really. It's, it's like it's, watching a small, small child get angry yes. and it's comedic. Yes. Yes. And, and I find a lot of the faces that she makes in this, not because she's a bad actress or that uh, it, it's not working in the moment. It just reminds me of Ronda Rousey. I'm telling you, anybody that could just go watch that trailer and you're and you just think of Ronda Rousey and you see it. And that's the thing that's like really bugging me uh with the trailer as well. So I hope I can just get Ronda out of my mind while I'm enjoying this movie cuz oh, or I just hope she's she's more infectious and fun uh than what I'm seeing in the trailer. Okay. Here's my I got a real quick hot take and then I'll elaborate. Here's my hot take. You can quote me on it. Watching that trailer was the equivalent of an unenthusiastic hand job. It was still a hand job, 
but it was unenthusiastic. There was nothing exciting about it. It didn't really it didn't really get me there. If the hand was it jobs, a dry hand job? it, it was just it was just nothing was good about it. Mm. Um, visually, I expect Marvel movies to look good, so that doesn't fucking mean anything to me anymore. Like I, it just doesn't mean anything. Like you got you got to with a trailer now, you've got to do more than show me that you have a, you know an incredibly expensive visual effects budget. Um, before I can get excited about it. Mm. Um, they didn't show me anything that hooked me about this origin story at all. There's nothing. Nothing was intriguing. Like literally anything. They did. There was, uh, and and maybe that's just Captain Marvel's character. Maybe I'd feel the same if I read the comics. I somehow doubt it. But uh, there was maybe, and maybe it was just like I said this on my stream. Maybe it was just a poor trailer. I don't. I don't know. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes they cut a shit trailer. And then the trailer two comes out, and then you're like, "Oh, okay, all right, now, now I'm on board." But for now, it was it was an unenthusiastic, sad hand job um, that you know got me there, but barely, and I had to think real hard about it. Um, mm. Mm. My gripes, my gripes, more specifically about it were uh, one. I, well, for for me, I didn't see the Rhonda thing. Like, I I get where you're coming from. I can kind of see it. It's not going to bother me if I see the movie. The her look it won't do it. Her voice, however, does not do it for me. I don't think it it does not sound commanding. She has like when I see like Captain Marvel's supposed to be, to my knowledge, and somebody in chat can correct me on this. One of the most powerful she is. characters in the Marvel universe. Yeah. Uh, and to my knowledge, she you know Rogue. In, in canon, gets most of her powers from Captain Marvel at some point. But she... I feel like she should have a relatively commanding presence, and Brie Larson does not have a commanding presence, um, really, in any capacity. Like, she kind of might, if you look at her the right way, have one, but as soon as she opens her mouth, zero commanding presence. Nothing. She's girl-next-door type shit. Um... For better or worse, maybe that's what some people want to, you know, want want to see. But it's really hard for me to go from Wonder Woman, which was, you know, in fairness, she's like five foot fucking ten or whatever, but she had a commanding presence, and when she opened her mouth, that worked too. On this side, not so much for me, mm, anyway. Mm, um, and that threw I'm me. With you. That threw I'm with me for you. yeah a little bit of a loop. Half ass hand job, an yeah. unenthusiastic hand job. That's I'm I'm a little bit more than that, but not too much further. Like my, maybe a bad blow job. Oh my fo my follow up with to tea. that is that my concern for this movie is that they're going to they're going to spend more time focusing on the fact that Captain Marvel is a woman than focusing on Captain Marvel the character. Captain Marvel the character is already hot fucking fire people were like you said people were already jacked about this movie because people love the character captain marvel it's a it's an amazingly good character we don't need to be reminded every five seconds that she's a strong independent black woman that don't need no man it just doesn't need to be the fucking movie and this trailer went out of their way to do the fucking like you know what? You know, like the what? I can't remember paraphrasing. It was like what it takes to be like a hero. But the way mm. they faded in the letters, her came in first, and then it was ah, uh, and then mm. oh at the end. And it, when I saw that, I was like, uh, now I'm concerned. It's not like I sat there and I I got angry about the fact that there's a female fucking character on screen. It's it's why. Uh, yes, she's a woman. Why? Like, stop making that a fucking point of of uh, like the drill. Why do you have to drill that in? Everyone knows Captain Marvel's a woman. We just watched the trailer. Because you got to hit up that female demographic, man. They want to get those females in the chairs. Fuck. Like Wonder Woman did. It's got to split selling, selling some tickets. Just Ticket selling. Yeah, yeah. So not only did the trailer do nothing for me, but it, my biggest concern is that is that for the sake of the character, and and honestly, for the sake of what could be a a really good job by Brie Larson with the character in the movie, the focus is going to be too heavily on the fact that it's a fucking woman and not the fact that that the character is fantastic and, and they give the good origin story and, and Brie does a good job. Like, we, that's, my, that's my concern. We didn't, 
We didn't even get we didn't even get it that much with Wonder Woman. Mm. And if there was going to be somebody you would think that that would leak into, it would be the fucking Wonder Woman movie. Mm. Now we're getting with fucking Captain Marvel. Come on now. We'll see. There'll, there'll be there'll be more trailers. We'll see so that. We'll see we'll, what happens in the next trailer. We'll but comment yeah, when the next one happens. Short short version. Unenthusiastic hand job. Like all the it. way to the base. Uh, all the way to to the bank on that one. Um. In something that got me a little bit more excited than an unenthusiastic hand job, the director of the first season of True Detective, Kerry Fukunaga, which is probably butchered when I just said that, taking over Danny Boyle's role as the director of Bond 25. That's cool. I like I that. Could, I could see that going very well. Yeah. I mean, the, oh. from, from like the direction in, in season one of that show... Yeah. Pretty good. And there was a Very lot of good. really good action scenes in that. The mo one of the most prominent scenes was that super that like super cut that they did. Mm -hmm. Um of uh Rust, you know, taking the druggie basically through all those houses. That that thing went on and on and they that stitched it really smart in like one, I think like one place or maybe two, but it was some super ass cuts yep. going on there. Uh so obviously he um he's got the chops for doing Good action shit. So I would be totally down for that. I'm down. Ho hopefully he locks in on that. I would be. I'd be thrilled. Um, and then the last thing I have here, and you might have some more to add in here, but I just scrolled past this. And I was. I, I got I, excited I, about this. Okay, new Space Jam, which we already knew was a thing, or at least I did yes. for a while yes, now. I knew. With, I knew. Le with LeBron, LeBron James, James is a yep. reboot, not a sequel. Mm. And it's uh, the team is hoping. To have some sort of role for uh, for Michael Jordan, if he'll if he'll take it. Mm. Why are you so excited? I need to hear this. I did. Uh, why why are you so excited about this? Okay, well, I, I the the Michael Jordan thing I didn't I didn't hear about, and okay. uh, you know, if Michael Jordan does get a role, it's probably going to be fairly small. Maybe he'll end up being the manager, or the team owner, or something like that. Mm. Um, the reason why I'm super excited, two reasons. Number one, LeBron James is awesome. Uh, he is a really good actor. He's got really, really good comedic chops. Um, he's been in a couple of movies. He did a great job in Trainwreck, uh, which which was the Amy Schumer movie, which is like the only Amy Schumer movie I've ever liked. Some irony uh, there. It's the only Amy Schumer movie that wasn't a train wreck. Yeah, exactly. Um, but LeBron James, man, he has got. He's like John Cena. Like he's he's a guy that's like a megastar, but he's got some really good acting chops and comedic timing chops. So when I first heard LeBron James was was doing a Space Jam, I was for this. And I heard about this well over a year ago. Oh, it's been a while since they announced uh, this. might have yeah. been like two years ago now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now that Ryan Coogler, uh, which I don't think you have on here. No, I didn't see anything uh, about that. Ryan Coogler is directing this Space Jam movie. And when I heard Ryan Coogler, if you don't know who he is, he um directed Black Panther. Mm. Uh he directed um the the like uh, the all those movies with with Michael B Jordan like Fruitvale Station, um the the Rocky movie. Right uh, right right. Um dude dude just just create What a crazy awesome what a crazy director fire. to manage uh, to lock down for Space Jam. Uh he also did um uh, one of the uh, Fast and the Furious. Um this guy uh, Creed, thank you. This guy is an amazing director, um, and the fact that he and and he loves to obviously he's a black director. Uh, he obviously loves to attach himself with with black leading role actors. Um, everybody's dream in life right now is to have Idris Elba play Bond and have Ryan Coogler direct a, a Bond film. Um, we can dream, but the fact that Ryan Coogler also signed on to this tells me two things. Number one, the script they have is probably amazing. It's great. LeBron James is so much fun to watch. And Space Jam is such an iconic movie that is just fun. It's great for all ages. And it's 2018 and we're getting a new updated version of Space Jam. I am for this all the way. I will be in the in the seats the, the Thursday night of... I am uh, all the talent involved. It's it's talent. It's just pure talent, and it's it's 
I don't see how this movie can suck. That's why I'm excited. about. I don't give a fuck about Michael Jordan. You know, fuck Michael Jordan. Whether he's there or not, I don't give a shit. But Ryan Coogler uh, and LeBron James in a Space Jam movie, sign me up. Yeah. Uh, um. So, yeah, I don't think Michael's going to be in it. And not, and not just for, you know, for, I mean... I don't think it's going to be it for a couple of reasons. One, he'd probably ask for too much money. Two, um, he's going to ask for too much money because it's an ego hit. You're talking about two of the greatest basketball players of all time, yep. and LeBron yep. James is literally redoing a movie that Michael Jordan did in his prime when he was the number one athlete in the world. So yep. um, just from an ego standpoint, I doubt that Jordan would ever take <laughs> even as even a small role, which is what it would have to be because be they're rebooting. You might see a funny scene at the end of the movie or or during it where he where Michael Jordan makes a small yeah some cameo weird little random he thing. He doesn't. It's not a big role. It's just it's it's just a small little cameo. But if he does get on, that's kind of a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal for for basketball. It's a big deal for. Uh, LeBron fans. Uh, I mean, how crazy would it be if LeBron, if, if if Michael played the lead character of one team and LeBron was of the other team, and they're using their animated friends or their cartoon friends or whatever, uh, and, and they're playing they're playing ball against each other. Who's going to win? Jordan going to be jokes Jordan, about Jordan would want to lose the other. You know what I mean? So Jordan we'll see. Lose. Exactly. The, so the, um, there, there could be some cool shit that could go down with that. Does Okay, who does who does the soundtrack for this movie though, Jeff? Because let's be honest, literally 50%, possibly more than 50% of the original Space Jam is the absolute smash fire hit. The title track of the whole thing, also Space Jam. That yeah. song Everybody. could not be It's timeless. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to be fucking jamming to that they need, shit they in need my just, grave. They just need to redo it. They just need to to do an oh, updated version of it. Do they and, do it? Do they? That's it. Yes. It's 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 like it's like having a Mortal Kombat movie without the Mortal Kombat. Ah. You might like the old din, 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 or or a Terminator music without that. Din, 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 din. Just do a different, updated, you know, modern take on it. Uh, but the movie has got to start with with that song. Going it has in, to it go. It has to in some capacity. It's like it's like having Power Rangers without without the 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 Power Ranger theme song. It's just Look, you don't you, you just don't do it. If I and think, you got to have R. Kelly on a soundtrack. Oh, uh, R. Kelly's too busy peeing on people. I know it's probably going to be a tough sell. It's but, probably not going to happen in this in, 20, in be, 2018, 2019, 2022. R. Kelly is way too much of a social justice hot button to be getting yeah. in on that shit. But for sure, if, if that song is going to be in the movie, I almost think they just use the exact same one. I don't think they update it. I think they just leave it. I think it would be weird to have the same one, but updated. I think it, I think it gets updated. I think it gets updated. I, know, I think that's the more likely scenario. Um, yeah. I would just probably rather them just. And I'm okay. I'm okay with it. it being updated. I'm okay with it being updated as long as it, mm. as long as they have even if they sample it like even if they have the same the same voice the same singer doing it but they just make it they add more layers to it or they just find a way to make it a little bit more theatrical make it just a little bit more epic for it to, to you know I'm not talking like you know Hans Brrr. Zimmer Hans yeah, Zimmer not, does the soundtrack need, to yeah, Space I Jam I don't need Hans Zimmer <laughs> doing it but I just give me give me give me a little update that's all oh now that I've said it. Somebody get Hans Zimmer to do the Space Jam soundtrack. There Let's go. go. Probably be fire. I I would not be upset. I would be interested in how Hans Zimmer does said soundtrack. Um. Yeah. All right. Is that that's it? it? Do you that's... have anything else that's popped up on your? Uh... Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all that that has popped up. So. Uh, American Horror Story, the second episode. It's still kind of whatever. There was a couple things that got more intriguing. Um, but it's still not all that hot. American Horror Story gets kind of weird, bro. Like I, I came into the game late because Gab's watched it. You know, for all like all the seasons, she's really into it, and I just saw like last season and this season, I think. And bro, it's fucking weird, man. Mm. They do some weird, weird shit. 
on that show. You know what I'm going to do that's a little weird, but I've been doing it more frequently? I'm going to have a barbecue right after this. <laughs> so I'm fucking hungry. As is tradition. You know, Kayla Kayla made dinner tonight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was... um. It was like some sort of beef roast, um, some sort of some uh, some sort of roast. It was like a big clunk of beef okay. um, that that she, I think she was marinating all day yesterday. And anyway, she cooked today and I just wasn't feeling it like it's like mm. it's like the first meal. And I would say one out of every like 20 to 30 meals Kayla makes that I just mm. I can't eat because it's just mm. like and 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 good on her like she. She tries and switch it, switches the things up so she'll find recipes and she like she's a cooker, so she'll go and do things. Sometimes it's just a miss. Not often. And then sometimes it's just not as great as some of the other stuff, but I'm it's still very edible. But today it was just like it just wasn't as soon as I put it in my mouth and I was chewing, I spit it out. It just wasn't wasn't feeling it. And she enjoyed it. She ate it and enjoyed it. So uh, all I ate was a little bit of rice and some veggies. And I'm I cook, starving. I cooked the same like four meals, bro. Yeah, well, that's usually what we do, but just, some, you know, she we just get tired of eating chicken or fish or uh, beef every single like like l- ground lean ground beef and making fucking you know tacos or whatever. It's the same shit. It's mostly chicken. It's mostly chicken and salmon. That's that's our jam here in this house. Yeah, chicken, chicken, uh, you know, fish. We had haddock two days ago. That was nice. Yep. But uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm hungry. Yeah, so let's do a couple up. of this. Uh, Hit me up with some technical alpha. Tech, I mean, some tech, tech support. support. Tech, tech support. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late. Uh, yeah, why not? All right, what do we got? Oh, first, before I forget, I had somebody message me one because they weren't going to be at available to uh, to ask the question when it went up. Okay. This come in, uh, comes in from Roran. Mm. Roran asks... What is or what or what favorite movie would you like remade and who would star or direct said movie? Oh man. Movie would I like remade? That's a good question. Man, what are some of my favorite all time movies? I'm going to go with uh, this. I'm going to go with Jingle All the Way. <laughs> John Cena? No. Okay. Oh. Oh. Huh? Oh. Huh? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Did I just fuck your shit up a little bit there? You know, that actually don't sound half bad. I'm going to go with my original thought. Okay. The Rock. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Either or would be. I'm gonna I'd go. Be, I was I'd gonna. I was gonna go with The Rock, but John Cena. That is. That's a good. That's a good role for him. Yeah. Um. He's a likable dude. Uh. But I think The Rock would do a great job, just because he's a little bit more of a seasoned, seasoned actor at this mm-hmm, point. Mm-hmm. He's a big, charismatic teddy bear. Um. He could play that father role very well. Um, he, you know, he would look like a superhero, although John Cena would too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with jingle all the way. And, and who doesn't like a good Christmas movie? And it's true. It's really, it's really hard to, to fuck up a Christmas movie. True. It happens. Yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't put it on the level of a blockbuster. You know, if, if, if it just makes you feel good and there's some snow and a Christmas tree and some family, a family drama and then a dinner and, and you've nailed it. I mean, it's really, it's not a. It's not a huge Which ordeal. is why so many Christmas movies are basically that. Like, the formula yes. is exactly the same. They hit on the same points. You could watch five Christmas movies, and you've technically watched the same movie mm-hmm. with just different actors. Mm-hmm. And it's the same shit. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. But that that's that's a good one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Gone in 60 Seconds. Hmm. Ryan Gosling stars. Ooh, I'm feeling that. All right. I'm feeling that. Who directs it though? Um and I'm going with I'm going with Margot uh Margot Rob uh fuck it. Mar- Margaret Rob Mar- Margot 
Robbie Rob, or whatever. Robbie, however you pronounce it. It's like, it's not Margaret, but no, it's like, it's, Mar it's, it's, it's something. You guys crazy. know who I'm talking about. The hot, the hot chick from, uh, <laughs> <laughs> from um from yeah. I Tanya and 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 Wolf on Wall Street, she plays Angelina Jolie's character. Yes. Okay. Margot. There you go. Margot. Yeah. Margot Rob. Margot yeah. Robin. I'm 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 down for that. So we get Ryan Gosling as Nick Cage's role, and then yeah, uh, Margot I, Robbie I, for uh for Angelina Jolie. Um. For the other characters, I don't know. I could sit here all day, come up with that shit, but we'll just go with that. Yes, and then, yes. as as a director, let's go with um, man. I don't. You know what? Fuck it. Nicholas Cage directs. Oh, for fuck's sake! Fuck <laughs> off! You just ruined the movie. <laughs> no, you literally right, just shit okay. all over all that right. movie. Uh, I mean, who give, would give give Nicholas Cage a small cameo, man? Like, who don't did, fuck him. Okay, who did? Who did? Um, who did Fast Seven? I think that was I think that was Ryan. Was that Ryan Coogler? Was it? Let me see. Fast Seven. There's so many of these fucking... Oh, that was James Wan. James Wan. James Wan. James Wan, Gone in 60 Seconds, starring Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie. Mm. That's a winner. I'd watch that shit. I'd watch the shit. Dude, that movie would sell. Yeah. That'd be a hit. I think we need another Gone in 60 Seconds. Mm. I'll, or I'm going to say I need a gone, another Gone in 60 Seconds. <laughs> I don't know if that plays in today's market, but I feel like, you know... Heist movies always do at least reasonably well. Yeah. Like, just, like, you might not top the charts, but you're going to probably make your money back on a heist movie. So, yeah, that sounds fire. Uh, actually, he has uh, that movie, The Moon Landing, uh, coming out, which I hear is, like, really, really good. Uh, he oh, plays yeah. Neil Armstrong or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ryan that's right. Gosling. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I it's, like, supposed to be really good. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Gosling like one of those like it's like one of those solid, independent films. Just a solid Ryan Gosling actor. has been doing a lot of these like he's for an Oscar, man. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Gosling is looking for an Oscar. He's like turning into a Leonardo DiCaprio. He's not on the talent of Leo yet. No. But he's he's talented as fuck and and he's 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 inching his way there. He's inching his way there. So. He's got, he's got all the right stuff. He yeah. just needs to hit the right movie at the right time. Yeah, have the right director, right script, right script. movie. Yeah, and it will boom. happen. Yeah. yeah. Like For he's sure. not he's not a bona fide movie star. He doesn't no. He's not like an A-list actor. Like he is an A-list actor, but he yeah. he doesn't he's he's not he's not Do you pulling, think it's he, just because of what he chooses or do you think it's it's no, I, he's I just, just think, not getting called? Yeah, I well I honestly I I, I think I think he Cuz if you look at what that, he's done, I don't think he's that relatable. I I just think Mm. I think, um, you know, there are just some movie stars that just have it right. There's there's, you know, that are super likable, super charismatic, not saying that Ryan Gosling can't be that or that he's not talented. He's a great looking dude. He's he's got he's got talent. I, I just think, um, you know, he's just. He's just not that he's just not that typical movie star. I don't th um, I don't think he's had that movie happen for him yet. I think that's part of the problem is I don't think he's had like that one movie because I feel like what you're describing is that most of the people have a movie that does that for them, right? Mm -hmm. Like Leonardo DiCaprio gets Titanic, for example, that thrusts them into that, you know, the mind of everyone, um, yeah. you know, both in Hollywood and as a consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Gosling hasn't really had a and I'm not saying it has to be on the scale of Titanic, but you know what I mean? Like the types mm -hmm. of movies that Ryan Gosling tends to do. Um, well, he's I'm going to no, say like, the, the air on the, uh, the air on the art house, right? The air on the side of the art house, like even drive is art housey. Yeah. Right? I mean, he's, he's no, like, I'm, I'm just saying like your typical actor, A-list actors like Chris Pratt, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't have that like ability. Yeah. Like I, yeah. Does, yeah. Right? I see he's not, he's, he's, he, he, he you know, you don't see him in many interviews or mm. he's not, he's, he's, he's a very private, he's a private, like, you know, it, it's, he's not a Will Smith. He's not a, he doesn't have that personality. He's just not, he's just not a bona fide movie star. He yeah. is a star and he's a celebrity. Um, Like you even look at it in the movie uh, 2044 or 2049 or whatever the fuck it is. That's a huge, huge movie, mm. but 
he doesn't he's not the guy that's going to fill up all the seats mm-hmm. you know uh you know is more of a Harrison Ford that people were excited about yeah, more yeah. so than Ryan Gosling right so i you know i don't know if it's an image thing or it's just a perception of what people th- say um you know but he's had huge huge successes like uh, like that musical th- movie that he did and shit fucking uh one that that won a bunch of oscars and stuff but Oh, um, I know what you mean. I know what you're yeah, talking about. La La Land, La La Land, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, La La and this Land, movie, yeah. and this movie that he's in with the with the space. I do believe it's the same director. So, um, you know, he kind of yeah, reminds just, me of it. Remind he reminds me of um, what's his face? The plays Commissioner Gordon. Yes, in, uh, yes. It's like the similar. Yeah. It's a similar thing. Like a younger, ver- younger version of him, right? He, like he never gets an Oscar. Uh, yeah. or he finally did. I think not long. Not, not I think that, Gosling will get one. Ago. It, yeah. It's inevitable. It will happen. But it's yeah, like it you know, happen. everyone likes to see him in the movie. You know, he's going to do a good job. Yeah. But he's not the thing. He's not necessarily the the actor that fills yeah. the seats. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's just it. That's just it. And I and I'm not saying he can't get there. It's just where he's at right now in his yeah, career. Right now, I think yeah. he's okay with it. Um, but until he yeah. gets a, until he gets a role that people can go, whoa. I didn't see him, you know, doing this. And and wow, he's really good at this. Uh, I'm down, right? But we're going to continue to see him going into things like like a true detective season, right? He'd be the type of guy that would go and 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 play a true detective uh in that or, or and try his acting chops in there and and really really bring it. Um then He would be a great pick something. for a true detective series. Yeah, of course he would. Of course, cuz he's that type of actor. He's like yeah, a yeah. seasoned Seasoned actor. He's but he's just not a bona fide movie star. Gary Oldman. That's who I was. I Gary never, Oldman. I've, I, yeah. He's he's. I mean, I'm bad with names anyway. But he's one of those actors I can never even remember the poor guy's name. And he's an incredible fucking actor. So it's just that's where he's at too. Um, mm. Let's see what we get here. Uh, oh, here we go. This comes in from Duke. 180 lifetime. Ten dollar mm. current pledge. Let's go. Thank you. Give an example of social justice uh, or a social justice cause that you considered as too, he, this is his words, too pussified and or snowflakey, as in they're going too far with this one. So like what, what, uh, which of, uh, of the many that you could choose from seem to come across as, okay, this is, this is too much. I mean, they're almost all like that. <laughs> it's I mean, true. I, it's, it's it's actually hard for me it's to true. pinpoint just one. I know, I know. I I could go for one that was before before this thing was like a social thing to be before I even heard the term social justice cause it was several years ago now. But when I was in the summer camps and they had this program which still exists to my knowledge called the High Five program. Yes. And yes. it was uh basically its entire thing is to yeah. like everyone wins. Everyone's a winner. Everyone wins and it and it you, we weren't allowed to play certain games because if the game in the uh ended with a definitive winner, it was immediately unallowed. So there was like like the class example, there's no dodgeball. There's no yeah. Anything like that because there is a clearly defined winner. winner. So, um, and it came with a bunch of other stuff, but it was along those those lines where everyone gets a uh, you know a reward every you know no matter what they you know what they do, everyone's the the winner, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the most soft shit that I've ever seen, and it's terrible because it happens during the formative years of children. Uh, where they then take that into the rest of their lives, and I'm not saying anything, you know, I'm not, I don't want to say anything, but I'm pretty sure we're seeing a lot of the kids that I, I, uh, I <laughs> brought up we're in summer camp. Of, we're seeing a lot of pussies right now. We're seeing, we're seeing the results of yeah. people that are, you know, 18 through 21, 22, whatever in that age range, that are that are now, you know. Uh, reaching adulthood and trying to apply that same logic to the rest of their lives, not knowing that the world doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, and now you have all this shit happening. So that was that. That's mine. Is it's soft as fuck. It's uh, it's kids are marshmallows. Um, you you can't you know do anything. I ignored it. I've I've said this on the pod- podcast probably before. I've said it on the stream when I talked about this in the past is when I was in the camps, I almost got fired once because my coordinator, uh, who you know, Jeff, is MJ. 
um, was like, you have, you know, look, you have, you have to do this. And I said, that's great. And I kept not doing it anyway. Um, because it was bullshit. Uh, I, I was like, I was like, look, if the parents have a problem, then come talk to me. I'll explain to them why I'm not turning their kids into fucking pussies. That's, that's basically it. So I, I didn't make any concessions and look, you know, what the fun part was between me and, and one other girl who, whenever we worked together, we didn't do any of that high five shit. We were the favorite counselors of all of the fucking counselors amongst the kids. When I, when I quit that job and came back, they had a literal day that was Adam comes to visit day and all the kids were jacked as fuck that I walked through the front door and I'm the one guy that was hardest on them. I was the guy that was like fucking <laughs> beating why. their ass and that's, that's why, why. Yes. right? They respected so, you. They respected me. So like that was, so I was, I was pleased that I did that shit, but that's some soft shit. And now we're seeing it. Like it's coming up. It's a whole generation of yeah. It's a whole I, generation I, of pussies, man. I deserve everything, yeah. even if I don't Entitlement do anything. Entitlement to the tenth degree. Yes, it's crazy. Uh, my yeah. social. I mean, I don't. I can't even really pinpoint, man. They're all. They're all ridiculous. I mean, they're st they're stupid. Um, I, I'm probably just gonna go with the Me Too movement just because it's easy. It's just annoying. It's is it's it's old. I think it's, it started old. with good intentions and then it got it, latched oh, it onto with, and blown fucking. It started to the with moon. great intentions and yeah. and it still it still holds true to at, at the at the core of it's what just the been, movement it's been, is about. It's been muddied. You know, it, it's it's no it's no different than 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 the uh, than the the Black Lives Matter movement, right? It's the same thing. Uh, yeah, and it's coming from a black guy. Um, same thing. It, it started. With a with a very very pure and and important message that is still there, but it's just it's gotten overshadowed by a whole bunch of fuckery. Yeah, uh, yeah, just a whole bunch of blaming and and poor me and and just fucking uh, blackmailing and just fucking witch hunting. It's crazy. So uh, you know, just just for the sake of the podcast. I'm just going to say the Me Too movement, it's bullshit, it's <laughs> stupid. I like the one you did, but I'm just going to, just so I don't copy it, sure, I'm just going to yeah. go with the Me Too movement. I love you, ladies, and y'all deserve, uh, you know. There you are a lot of people so right, inside of that fuck, movement man. that you're on, you're there. Oof. Unfortunately, yes. you're on the minority at this point. Yep. Too many bandwagoners with the wrong intentions have opted on that shit. Yep. Uh, Let's see. I've just read a question here that I'm not going to read out loud that I can't even fathom why why that question would be asked. So we're just going to pass right over top of that bad boy. Uh, let's see. Hockey Psycho. Here we go. $100 lifetime, $100 current. That's a brand Woo! new executive producer. Let's, let's fucking go. go. Let's go. Adam and Jeff, what is one habit that you wish you could drop and one habit you wish you could pick up? Damn. Uh, a habit I wish I could drop. You know, honestly, if I had to pick one habit, because I don't have many habits. And and most of my habits are fairly, the fairly good habits. Um, if I had to pick one, I would say eating out. Um, it's a habit that I do just about every day, seven days a week. Uh, I would say maybe three days in the month I don't, and that's assuming I don't leave the house, and also assuming that Kayla doesn't just go out and get us food. So I eat out every day. Every single day, I would say it's a minimum. It's not too. It's not terrible. Um, I on the high end, I'll spend twenty to twenty five dollars on takeout food, but on an average day throughout thirty day period, it's about ten to twelve bucks. So I'll go and I'll buy a a, a subway. I, I actually, you know, let's let's bump that up fifteen bucks uh, on average a day. And that's usually like a Subway meal or as of late, I've been going to the coffee shop in the morning. So I'll have like a bacon sandwich at Tim Hortons and a coffee and a muffin. 
uh, which is a uh, little less than $10. And then, you know, I'll buy it, you know, have like a Red Bull or something cost me a couple bucks. But I would say on average, it's about $15 a day. If I go and get sushi, that's a $20 day, 20, probably 25 bucks after I'm done getting coffee or an energy drink for the day or whatever. So, but if you just cut it loose, 15 bucks a day, um, and it's a habit of mine. It's not that I can't afford it. It's not, it's not the end of the world. I mean, this is 15 bucks. Um, but it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a habit of mine that I would love to eat more home meals. And fortunately, you know, and unfortunately my wife isn't working now, so I do get a home cooked meal basically every day, but it doesn't mean that I can't make my own goddamn lunch. Uh, I'm just lazy. Uh, and I also have no desire to make food. It's just, and honestly, a lot of it for me is I just need the feeling of leaving the damn house. And so every day I just want to get out and go and listen, I'm a streamer there. I don't do anything except work, do this. So when I leave the house, the only thing for me to go do is spend money on food. I'm not going to like the mall to window shop. I don't travel to go to work. I don't, you know visit my friends at one o'clock or 11 a.m. in the morning. Everybody's working because they got lives. I'm going to spend money and it's usually on food. So, and it's every day I need to leave the house. Sometimes I'll just go get a coffee and come home. But most days I'm stopping at Subway or I'm going to Starbucks or I'm going to Tim Hortons or I'm going to get sushi or I'm going to the grocery store to buy, you know, chicken or whatever. Um, that's That's my habit. So if I could break one, it's eating out. Still like to eat out, but just maybe not every day, maybe three or four days a week instead of seven. Um, and if I could pick one up, um, I'm trying to think of something that I that would be time consuming and hard for me to do because I could say working out and I and I do exercise like I go for a run or a treadmill or whatever. So you know, it's just all dependent on on how. Uh, you know, and I don't want to say eating more healthy because it's more food. So I'm going to go with, if I had to pick up a habit, I'd say like, uh, learning a second language. So practicing, uh, how to speak a second language would be, would be a cool little habit to have. So I I'd like to maybe okay. do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say, I was going to say the same thing. Like my only real, well, I guess I could get, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I don't eat out as much as you, but I still feel like I, I eat out too much. It's usually lunch for me as well. And, uh, um, I, I probably spend, uh, I probably spend, let's say 150 bucks a month eating out. Which in my book That's is, it? is <laughs> which which Woo! in my which in my book is still too much. It's about um, a week for me. Because $150 is like 20% of my total food bill if I go to the grocery store. Yeah. So just like ideally I just go I do, I just go and get, you know, for for Gabs and I, we we had never quite got there after we moved, but before we moved, hopefully we fall back into this habit was we'd order out once a week or we we'd go get something once a week and it was like Daryl burgers or some shit. We just do that every once a week. Yeah. And that yeah. was a show. And I then that and then that, that ends up still being like Oh, it's not nine, cheap, like so. ninety bucks a month or some shit like that. But yeah. um but it does dramatically like eating out is one of those things where if you don't stop and think about and add up how much you're spending, it's a lot. It can slip away from you how much you're spending on yep. on eating out. And it's funny because when you go to the grocery store and you're looking at food to buy and you sit there and you gripe about how much it is to buy like meat and shit, <laughs> you're like this chicken's 26 bucks. You get nine pieces of fucking chicken. 26 bucks and you're like god fuck me and then you go to like subway or some shit it's 15 dollars 15 like, dollars on a, on a, a meal. single a single meal and it's shit food so like, yeah. like it's but it's funny that's just how your it's, it's like just how your brain works it's like you're operating in two different expenditures like it's as to what you consider man. it's how we're conditioned yeah. to spend like it's so just the, the marketing train i definitely oh. would also like to to edge towards not 
and I did do well for a while. I was doing meal prep and stuff, and I'd still like to get back to, to, to doing that. But yeah, that for sure. And then a habit to pick up for me would be uh, I would like to get back in the habit of going to bed earlier and waking up earlier. I've had the hardest fucking time doing that. Um, I've always been a night owl, and I and I'm getting to the age where that doesn't fly anymore. Even though I'm working for myself, it still doesn't really work. The rest of the world is still operating on a totally different fucking schedule than I am. So, um, even if I was to get out of bed at like nine o'clock in the morning. That's great, because right now, I'm going to bed, by the time I'm turning the light off, not going to bed because, you know, we're watching something or, or whatever, but turning the light off to go to sleep, like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock oh, in the morning. That's crazy, dude. See, I'm, I've been, been good about that. I've been in bed be by between noon and 1 a.m. Like, the other, I think it was last night, I streamed, to, or the night before, I streamed to, like, 1.30 in the morning or something. That, that was, like, like your stream anniversary for thing me, or whatever. Dude. Yeah, yeah that, that was for the seven-year anniversary stream. Um... For the most part, man, I'm in bed by noon, one o'clock, and I've been mainly doing it because I had to been waking up early to to write this book and then also still get my hours in. Yeah. But on top of that, I just needed to and want to spend more time with my wife, like just being able to lay in bed and just watch Netflix and chill. You know what I'm saying? Or just like fucking like having a bit of time to because that's a, probably a problem that you have, too, where you finish work. Right. It's like two o'clock in the morning or whatever. Yeah. And or you start late, like maybe eight or nine o'clock at night. You're like, well, fuck, I'm not just going to stream for two or three hours. I'm going to put in like four or five hours. Yeah. You finish like two o'clock, but then you got to like you got to like down. You got to wind down. That's yeah. the that's the fucking killer. I can't just stream and then go to bed. I can't do it. So I need to like stop by like midnight ish. And then lay in bed until one, one thirty, watch TV and then like fall asleep. Because I can't just, I, dude, if I, if I, because I used to do it all the time. If I stream till two, three o'clock in the morning, I'm not falling asleep till like five. Yeah. Like it's fucked. Which, and then you wake up at 11, 12. You're like, fuck my day. And now I need to eat and get this emails done and fucking upload like I, but, shit. But, and, and it's, and, but even though you're awake for the same number of hours, you still somehow manage to get less done. It's a really yes. weird. Yes. It's a really weird situation to be in. Like I'm still awake the same hours as somebody who got up earlier but I like it, it's harder for me to be as productive for whatever reason. And um, it's, it's probably because for the first 22 years of my life, I was on the schedule that was early until whatever. And so now I feel like I'm yeah, missing some shit, you know, when, it, when it's not necessarily the case. But still, I would like to get back to, to, to that, you know, back it up, be able to get up earlier and and, you know, uh, for whatever just to just to get on the same page as half the other, you know, yes. people yes, would be would you. be great. No, that's good. No, that's good. So I that's think we're... that's definitely mine. Yeah. Uh for for sure. Um yeah. Yes. We have time for one more fast one cuz I am hungry. Yeah, you are and pushing two and a half hours. So a hungry man. Let's go with this comes in from Will. $100 lifetime $10 current pledge. Let's go Will. Mm. What's your favorite superhero costume? Ooh. Uh. Mm. Mm. Costume, superhero costume. You know, probably my favorite is Deadpool. Mm. I just like it. I It's sleek. Uh, I love the color palette to it, the red and black. Um it's it's modern yet still kind of comic booky like it's it's still sort of over the top but but not um yeah i'm going to go i'm going to go with i'm going to go with deadpool i really really like deadpool's get up that's tough that's a tough that's a tough question like batman has about 101 different fucking costumes that dude has a different costume for every day of the week and then some yeah. So I'm sure there's a couple of Batman costumes that I'd side with. So I'll avoid that one. Um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll go based on the movies that I've seen recently. Like the, the more recent superhero shit. Of all of them, I actually really like Wonder Woman's uh, costume. Yeah, out of I everyone's. Like I thought I thought that they did a really good job of of updating 
you know, Linda's original Wonder Woman get up and, mm-hmm. uh, and not fucking hypersexualizing it more than it needed to be. It just looked good. It just looked fucking really good. Uh, so I'd probably, I'd probably go with that for more recently, honestly. Um, I think that they did a really good job as well with, um, with uh, Superman's costume in the more recent films. Mm-hmm. Um, just agree. from a, a material wise, it just looks really good. Yeah, uh, and it looks this, more alien too. It just yeah. looks, it just looks better because the old school one just looks cheesy, man. It looks oh, fucking, super cheese. It's so fucking bad, man. Yeah. It's like a bad outfit. But the but, newer uh, yeah. one looks the newer one, one looks uh, looks good. So yeah, I'm gonna I'll go I'll go with those two as my uh, as my picks. Yeah. Wonder Woman is a really good choice. Yeah. Yeah, D, both of them DC, which is freaking hilarious to me. But yeah, that's uh, yeah, Wonder Woman. I'm gonna say for sure is my my number one. <laughs> so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We've come to the end of another Tactical Alpha podcast. Soon, guys. Soon. Soon. To remind you change. again, it's happening soon. It's happening. It's in the works. Yes. It's not now. It's not likely next Thursday. It it's might very be. Soon. It might be the following one though. It might be the following Thursday. That would be the earliest I could possibly envision it happening. And it might even be one more beyond that, depending on, you know, how long it takes us to figure out the setup once we have the gear. So the the stuff is ordered and it's on its way. Also, good news for all you supporters already. We're going to be updating the Patreon page. You're going to be getting some new perks to that. Yes, that's Uh, that's coming as well. Is going to be StarCraft related where you guys can send in games and, and do all kinds of cool shit. So we're not really taking away anything. A lot of the physical stuff is going to be gone. Um, but yeah. now there's going to be a lot more content and more digital stuff. Uh, for well, you guys the, the physical added. stuff isn't necessarily gone. It's just gone. being shifted. It's, just, it's being shifted to a different tier. A, One a singular tier, tier instead of yeah. splitting all that shit up. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That will that will also be uh, coming along. So yeah, you see so now you know. Now you know it's coming. We're working. We're we're, we're working, working on it. On it. Mm-hmm. Either wait for them to deliver some shit, so we can get it. We can get it going, ladies and gentlemen. Let's head on over to this uh, this antiquated end screen, so that I can uh, take a quick peek uh, peek see at our our Patreons to give a shout out to. Even though there's so many of you, just endless. Jetrix. There's going to be a day, Jeff, that we look at this and Jetrix is going to be at 10K and it's going to fucking blow my mind. It's going to happen. Likely. Jetrix, Postal Panda, Matt M, Chico, Toad of Steel, Black Jimmy, Jamaican Jazz, Adam B, Derek P, Hockey Psycho. That's a new one. We just talked about that. Fresh. Fresh off the presses. Picked a good time, too, because you're going to get some extra perks. Great timing. You're going to be getting some stuff in the mail. Martin K. Soft Shoe. Sam R. Game Cock Toss. And so many more. I want to remind some people. Check your patron account. Make sure that if you still want to be part of our patron and, and any other patrons that you might be part of, that your payment method has not been declined. Patreon did another Patreon thing a couple of weeks ago or whatever, and shit went tits up, and they have no way of really doing anything but to tell us, to tell you, to double check that your stuff is still going through. We can see on our end that there are some uh, declined uh, processing, Yeah, and it's usually... Judging by the names I'm seeing, it's unlikely that you canceled it, and it's more likely that you were unfortunately part of that gong show. So just double check, make sure everything's kosher uh, if you want to continue to be to to be part of the Patreon. And you're going to want to be because the Patreon stuff that's coming is good stuff. Oh, it's going to be going to be exciting, guys. Like TV's coming back. It's good stuff. Well, we never really went away. We're well, just we never really went away, but we're coming back know. a little more. Mm, We're turning the dial from like a seven to an eight point five. <sighs> we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>